The following is a presentation of the Disc Golf Pro Tour on Disc Golf Network, the home of live disc golf. I'm here with Ed Hedrick, who is PDGA number 001. Ed, you invented the disc pole hole. How has the sport pro progressed in the last 25 years? It just took off like wildfire. And now we see the top of the pinnacle, where these people are so much better than us old guys that they're not even in the same game anymore. Now that it's getting for more money, more clout, more points, more everything, you know, it, it matters more. When you throw that good one and it does exactly what you want, that's like the, the feeling that I like crave. He likes it. No way! Gibson! Oh my gosh, I have goosebumps. The fans are there holding their breath like, oh. I'm living that same moment. I'm sitting there like, am I gonna, am I gonna execute? Those moments are what get your heart going. Last year, every weekend felt like the biggest tournament. Like you felt like you were playing on the biggest stage. It's pretty insane to see how much we've grown as a sport. To come out to some tournaments, and just see literally thousands of people out there. It makes it almost more fun, you know, to just to be excited to see how the discs are flying. being amazed when something works just right. I expect the sport to continue to explode this year. And I expect there to be great energy at every event. Unbelievable stuff from Paul McBeth. We're just going off the ramp. I think we're just about to catch air vertically. I've put in all of my life and all of my effort to be a professional disc golfer, and I'm excited about what the future brings. It's very apparent now that we are on the brink. Each event can really become a huge impact on your career. We're putting the puzzle pieces together now, and it's going to keep snowballing. You know, this is this is something big, and I'm. It's only getting bigger. Wow, the season is is upon us, and those big moments are are just ahead. Welcome back to Vegas for the final round of the Las Vegas Challenge presented by Innova. Who will be there first to put the stamp on the season? We'll find out in a few hours' time. At the top of our very talented field is a 16-year-old disc golf prodigy in Gannon Burr. Entering his final round with a three-stroke lead. Philo, you like the kids' chances? Well, will today be the day that the child prodigy becomes a champion, or will it be another stepping stone towards greatness? We'll just have to wait and see. He is in the driver's seat, and at the moment, it's his ball game to lose. Perfectly put, sir. And we have some developments over overnight on the scoring side. Tell us about that. Yeah, so we found out that um, one of the competitors, unfortunately, Tristan Tanner. Tristan Tanner, misplayed hole six the first time around. That's the quadruple island hole or triple island hole mm -hmm. coming up and uh, he didn't go to the drop zone after going out of bounds ended up getting some bad information I heard from a spotter that yeah. used to play it where he was last in bounds and didn't throw a provisional didn't ask any questions unfortunately played it wrong and was later penalized after it was made aware and I'm sure that's a lesson he learned, and he won't make the same mistake again. Absolutely. Provisional for the win, Philo. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah, it never hurts you, right? It never yeah. hurts to ask. It's yeah. our 134 tee time, leading the way at 25 under par, Ricky Wysocki. <laughs> Ricky is on the box. Let's get a forehand of Felon over there.
That's a long ways from the basket, Ian. He is. He is long and Next up, left also at 25 under par, Anthony Barilla. A.B. Oh, he's just an absolute treat when this guy's on camera. Throws just some unhuman shots, it feels like, sometimes. Absolutely. This is the course that can really showcase that for him. Very similar to a goat hill. It's wide open, lots of room to work the disc. Well called, sir. This is a Halo Destroyer from A.B. One of the best forehands in the game. That's the way to do it. Bullseye Third on, on the card at 24 under par. We have Scott Withers. Scott Withers, the Pacific Northwest finest. And he's throwing some new plastic this year as well. Did he make the switch last year? No. I believe it was this offseason. I think he was with it the last year. Yeah. I could be wrong. Scott has all the tools you need on this course. A fantastic forehand. Huge distance backhand. He is a fantastic putter. Forehand's working early for Scott. Absolutely. Leaves himself with a short inside circle. And rounding out the chase card at 23 under like par. Garrett Gurthy. Florida's Garrett. finest. Garrett Gurthy. Premier arm in today's game. And G just going with a rock off the tee here. Absolutely blistered that rock. What a <laughs> shot. It's a daydream right there. Philo, he took this one down a couple years back, my friend. Oh, my goodness. You guys are going back to this now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Look. Yep. Those were the good old days, man. I was in a real good rhythm right around that time. Um, pretty much had the whole off season to work on my game. I'd really committed myself to the disc golf tour at that point. Came out fresh and ready to play in Vegas. Had a real good rhythm that week. What this one mean to you, man? It meant a lot, man. It really felt good to beat some quality players at a tour event. You know, the first I mean, Vegas has always been a, a key stop on the tour. You know, and guys love coming to Vegas. And usually a really strong field. And I remember the day before I left, my mom telling me, "Philo, play to win." And I said that to myself every time I stepped up to a putt. That's a great story, Philo. Play to win, Philo. I went out there and got it done. That was for mom right there. Some classic Philo throws, some classic Philo putting. That was, that was a fun little peek back. I am Ian Anderson hanging out with Philo Brathwaite, the Tony Romo of disc golf. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the compliment. Thank you, sir. <laughs> One day we'll get you the paycheck. Maybe, huh? Yeah. Thanks for tuning in today in the booth in Milwaukee. Happy to have you on DGN. We are back on one with Ricky Waisaki. He's out in circle two. Rick is inches short on the birdie bid. Almost always online. Yeah. The rest of the gang had some really nice drives. Such a tough stick to put this one close, especially with the backhand line. The backhand line, definitely. The sidearm, <coughs> excuse me, yeah, plays very, you know, yeah. Very fair to the sidearm, minus a potential roll away or backspin. But yeah, that backhand line, double G made the right call going mid range. Just mitigates that skip at the end. Such a luxury to have with his arm. This is for birdie for G to start the day. <sighs> Everything but in for double G. A little bit of all of it, and does it fall? These guys really can't afford to have a slow start. The guys that are on the early start are making some moves. Adam Hammes is 8 through 8. Nico Castro is 8 through 9. Thomas Gilbert is 9 through 11. Yeah, they're halfway through the course or so, but got to score early out here. Withers is scoring early with a nice birdie make there. Man, if you're in the Pacific Northwest and you sign up for a tournament, you think you're feeling good, and then Scott Withers signs up. You're like, oh, I guess I'm getting second place at best. <laughs> he just crushes up there. Birdie for AB, birdie for Rick, or par for Rick, and double G. And we got our course close up thanks to our friends at UDISC, this wild horse golf facility. Today we are on the end of a course I call the premier course in the facility. Absolutely. 
Definitely think the course we saw yesterday is the more challenging of the three courses. It offers a bit more variety and, sh you know, the shapes of shot. You're going to see a lot more standard hyzers out here. There's, you know, not a whole lot of shot shaping you really need to do. You can really let loose and fire some real strong hyzers and push the fairways a long way up here. It's a great course, though. It's a lot of fun. Beautiful venue. Lots of great looks. Great scenics all around this course. Happy birthday to Dustin Keegan. I just saw his face pop up there. Nice. Happy so birthday. And Adam Hamless, we mentioned his earlier. Let's check out that scorecard. That's that's what it should look like when you're trying to make moves. Not going to win today, but he's going to move up the board quite a lot. Well, barring some guys on the lead card really falling off, high chances he won't take this one down, but has a chance to post a really good number. Awesome round rating. AB over on hole two. That looks perfect. A rock three toss from AB, and he's putting for birdie. Scott Withers. short there. Scott Withers going to have a bit more work to do for his birdie. The guy's a silent assassin. You don't really hear much out of that guy's mouth. Mm -mm. Just quietly goes about his work. Ricky Wysocki now hopping up on the box. A little forehand harp coming from Ricky. Got it up in the air enough. It's right there, right where he wants to be. Double G. Looked a little high and left, Ian. Yeah, I think you're right, sir. Looks like got about a 45, 50 footer out there. Fortunate to punch through and progress the fairway, give himself a look. Yeah, it really was. This is Calvin Heimberg over on hole three. That looks more like a Vinny putt. There he is. Had a very uncharacteristic day for Calvin yesterday. Like it was. Five in the circle. I know he had some struggles late last year. We're aware, but nothing like we saw yesterday. Well, he's off to a solid start today. Three down through four. Missing on hole four. Looks like. Actually, he hasn't even finished hole five, excuse me. Mm -hmm. He's putting for birdie from circle two. So opportunities for Calvin to redeem himself from yesterday. You'd love to see it. That is Garrett Gerthy, center of your screen. We'll see how aggressive he gets on the birdie look. Double G can take these putts from way out here pretty comfortably. He doesn't putt with a lot of speed. You know, yeah, exactly. That's the good thing about having control of that speed with the putter, man, is you can really take some of those longer runs. And that one's... Not his best effort yet, but should be okay to get his par. Looks like he went to the Sonic on that one. <laughs> yeah, he did. Went with the spin putt. Mm -hmm. A little shy on the release. A Sonic, a real unique disc. Tell me about it, Philo. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like a catch disc more than a throwing disc, yeah. really. Kind of like a hero. Withers out in circle two. The jumper is on point from this man usually, though. I think he caught something on the way out. It's Definitely did. Yeah. Low ceiling here to contend with if you're a little shy. Anthony Barella might have a little bit of that to deal with. Thankfully not a huge issue for his putt, huh? No, he putts with plenty of speed. As long as he keeps that disc lined up with his body, they usually go in. I've got that radar gun we mess around with sometimes, and his putt is the only one that shows up on the radar gun. That's going fast enough <laughs> to register. he is. Anthony Barella with a solid start. 
high 20s, low 30s on his old putt. That looked a little, a little more pace, or a little less pace, excuse me, on his. It had some nice touch to it. Yeah. By Saki Casual Birdie for the two time. Surprised okay. Ricky's putt wouldn't show up, man. He jams him in there pretty tough. Yeah, huh? That might be one we haven't got a haven't got a clock on yet. I'm sure his would register. Oh yeah. Garrett Gerthy saving par. Always important to go through your full routine, regardless of distance. Garrett doing just that. Scott dropping in par as well. We are ahead to hole five and Luke Humphreys. First time getting a look at Luke this weekend, huh? Yeah. Oh, nice birdie for Luke. Four Looking for five. Solid. Luke Humphreys putting in work early. Yeah. And Adam Hammes, we are told, birdied again. He is nine for nine. Wow. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, more action in Vegas. It was one of those experiences that I'll never forget. It was different than just playing doubles with your partner because you had a team of, I think it was the four of you, an alternate shot. And so, you know, you're strategizing with these guys and then you're watching, you're sitting out for a whole watching them play it. And you're going to have a whole bunch of fun. You're going to learn a lot about the sport. You're going to make new friends. You're going to have just everlasting memories. I'd love to do it again if I could to have participated in that. It was really a special experience. PDG Event Support Helpline. Hey, so I'm setting up the most epic event of all time, and I'm wondering, do I need insurance? As long as the event's in the U.S. or Canada, insurance is included with your sanctioning agreement. Okay, awesome, because we're trying this cool new thing where we have an alligator pit on the 18th green. It's going to be epic. Insurance or not, I don't think having literal death putts is a good idea. <sighs> okay, I'll consider it. No, no, boy, no! Are you still there? Oh, God, are you still there? Focus, get rid of any of those pressure thoughts and really center yourself, like where you're at and the shot you're throwing, trying to just really let everything besides the basket bleed away. Okay, so that about wraps up this meeting. Thank you all for sitting through that lengthy presentation. Any questions? Twice or it's luck. That's not exactly a question, Zach. What do you mean? Twice or it's luck, Gabe. Um, yeah. Welcome everyone to today's presentation on expense reports. <laughs> You've seen them in the hands of professionals, helping them compete at the highest level. Whale Sacks is a female-owned small business, handmade in the USA. We are dedicated to outstanding grip for all disc golfers. Action in Vegas. You are looking at Ezra Aderholt putting for birdie on five. Make a short work of that one. You're looking at A B over on hole three. Scaring some coots, but looking like a birdie. Sure is. Saki.
Got kind of an anti-skip there. Yeah, there's a crossing wind. Look at that flag. Oh. It's pushing against the disc and didn't allow the disc to finish. Fortunate he stayed in bounds, but he's going to have a tricky putt coming up in a minute. Yeah, that, that wind is starting to pick up quite a bit. Scott Withers on the box of three. Scott didn't get much of a finish either. That wind is really holding up those hyzers, isn't it? It really is. Yeah, you're giving up that face to the wind and it's just pushing down on the disc the whole time. It makes you change the shape of the shot a little bit with this wind blowing sideways. Double G. Well, he got a good wind read and adjust. Nicely done from double G. Oh, yeah. That's the type of putt you need on a windy hole. Yeah. The elevated pin. <laughs> Use the wind maestros to give him a line, and he makes the adjustment. Over to six, and Kevin Jones putting for birdie. KJ. Right in the heart on the death putt towards the water. That's a good sign right there for KJ USA. How's this round going so far? KJ is oh. five down through six. Had a miss on hole four. And Other than that, all blue. Ricky Wysocki for birdie. Front of cage. AB for birdie. Three for, for three. Yeah. He's got them all. Scott Withers missed his birdie putt from circle two. This is now for par. See that headwind try to lift that disc up. Wisely aiming the disc in the bottom third and anticipating a little lift. Nice putt from Scott Withers. Garrett Gerthy drop and birdie. There we go. Get something rolling for double G. Why Saki, that is a par. Your chase card is headed to hole four. Up ahead to seven we go to check out a Calvin Heimberg drive. Calvin Heimberg, five through six. Hill of Destroyer is in the air. You would love for this to stay safe. Oh, that's got to sit. All right, well, birdie guaranteed. Maybe even an eagle putt for Calvin yeah, coming up. Yeah, point. That's a good, good curl right there. That was. Those usually go OB. They do. He just barely trickled over the back, so that might have been what saved him. I think so. Any extra speed, and that's game over. Tristan Tanner waking up two strokes farther back than he went to bed with. That's never a good feeling. No. So he is now... Four back of Gannon, yeah. A little extra work to do, but that shouldn't change his game plans. Get out there, play to his strengths, be aggressive, do what he's done the previous three rounds to get him to this point, and let the chips fall where they may, as they would say here in Vegas, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Perfectly put, sir. Child Prodigy getting ready on one, 16 years old, and leading this incredible field by three strokes. That's Ladies wild, man. Welcome to lead charge at the 2022 Las Vegas Challenge presented by Innova Champion Discs. This is our 154 starting time. Your current leader sitting at 29 under par. Give it up for Gannon Burr. <laughs> Gannon going back to that go-to D1 he loves so much. Uh, and the least surprising stat ever, if Gannon wins, he will be the youngest winner of a Disc Golf Pro Tour event ever. Current record holder, Kyle Klein. Oh, so bad. 
Sounded like he was too enthusiastic about it, but it turned out pretty decent looking to me. He's going to have a nice flat putt. He's in the circle, right? Should be right on the circle's edge or so. Yeah. We got double G on the chase card. We got double T on the lead card. Tristan Tanner. Guys, he's no less than 15 feet from the pin, actually, for Gannon Burr. Great drive. <laughs> the man has high expectations, Terry. Nice effort from Tristan. He'll also have the pin high uphill putt. Yeah. Third on the card at 26 under par. Welcome, Eagle McMahon. McMahon. Despite taking away his forehand, he is still on this lead card in Vegas. Reaching for the splice. We're going to see that big spiking backhand hyzer from Eagle. It's a very overstable fairway. There's not a lot of room on the right side of this target for this to stick. This is usually the reaction when you yeah. come in a little bit on the left side. And that could even roll further out. Also at 26 under par, Drew Gibson. <laughs> Drew Gibson takes the tee of one. We have an eagle coming from Drew. A little bit lower, more direct line. Nicely done from Drew Gibson. I like that. It's a smart play. Yeah. And if you are just joining us today, Gannon Burr has been putting on a show. Let's check it out. And the putter has been warm. More That's than that. understatement, my friend. Yeah. It's been red hot with the putter, pretty much making all the putts that he's taken. I haven't seen his putter on the ones that he is actually going for hit the ground maybe a handful of times this whole event. He's really feeling it on the putting green, which is so impressive for such a young guy to be out here doing this on the big stage with almost a full house of the world's best players. Right. Missing just a couple. That was a run. Six. Down on both knees, that was so nasty. How do you generate that kind of power from that position? Long and lanky kid, man. I guess so. Oh, death putt over there on 10. Another death putt. <laughs> 11. Right in the heart, too. Those back to back death putts. It was. This one's kind of scary, too, putting back up the hill with that green right behind it. And that was the safe part after missing inside the circle. That's true. Yeah. So gathering himself and even making the circle two putt. Showing all the. All the things you need to be one of the best, that's for sure. Showing a lot of, you know, grit and determination, staying calm, staying within himself, having <laughs> some fun, all these little things. I mean, he kind of came up the right way, winning Junior Worlds, you know, taking down all these tournaments, learning to win. We'll see if it works today. McMahon, long birdie bid. Kutraz. <laughs> the bigger bird will scare the little birds away. <laughs> Coots are afraid of eagles. Can't confirm. Oh. And this is an Audubon Society uh, sponsored course. Just shy is eagles bid for birdie. Look like that was just slow enough to keep him in bounds. There is an OB cart path not far, maybe six, seven steps past the basket. Looks like Tristan Tanner will be next to act. Pretty look.
Tristan Tanner once again making good inside circle one. Looking strong with the putter this weekend as well. Been throwing the disc exceptionally well. Giving himself all kinds of opportunities. But don't mean a thing if you can't get that disc into the bottom, right? True words. Gibson to match the birdie from Tanner. Drew's putter's warmed up nicely. His putting has much improved over the last two seasons, man. Oh. It's come a long way. Absolutely. I think he's just made up his mind. This is the style I'm going to roll with, and he's just committed to it. Yeah. Owning it, and he's playing some real good disc golf. It, I mean, it kind of went from a liability to an advantage. Drew Gibson's putting these days. How important is this putt right here, Philo? This is a big one. It's not very long, but, you know, settle those nerves right away. Let these guys know you're ready to go. Not a problem. And that's going to push his lead to four um, with Eagle taking a par. Over the lead card anyway. There's a lot, a lot happening on the field as well. There is a lot happening, and he's got 17 holes to go, and all types of things could happen out here. It's not a complete walk in the park. There is some danger around. Mm -hmm. Eagle coming back for par, and Eagle does save the par there nicely. While they walk the two, we're going to show you Ricky Waisaki putting on hole four for birdie. Right hand side chains and falls out. Slow start for Ricky Waisaki. One down through four. Probably feels like a couple over right now if you're Rick. <laughs> yeah, he's not going to be happy about that. That's for sure. But look at Adam Hammes. Hasn't had a par on his card. <laughs> One bogey on hole 10. The rest birdies nine down through the round. We are popping over to Calvin Heimberg. This is an eagle bid on hole 7. So he's long of the pin coming back up. You have a hazard left and right if this sails too far. Good effort from Vinny. Inches short, but consolation prize was a birdie. So Calvin, six down through seven. While they wait, we'll show you Kevin Jones on eight. Ooh, nice make from KJ USA. That's a good birdie to get right there. One of the you know least birdied holes on this front nine. It's playing at 28% birdie rate so far today. Only hole 13, 15, 16, playing a little bit less than that. Terry, do you know what they're waiting on down there? Uh, honestly, I don't. I'm at about the halfway point, and I'm guessing maybe it's getting the scoring all correctly inputted. There's not no sure what the they're waiting way, on, right? <laughs> Correct. Right. This is all free and clear to go. All right. I'm sure they'll get going eventually here. Oh, this Roadrunner. Cool. Man, my star Roadrunners are flying great right now. <laughs> That's a great disc. Man. <laughs> Been using those things all over the place. Yeah. It's blew my mind. I thought those things were going to be roller discs, and they're like flying like Valkyries sometimes. Yeah. It's pretty nice. Get one of those Barsby ones? No, they're just some regular stock, you know. Gotcha, gotcha. Send them to me right before the holiday break. Okay. Should I wait or what? It's up to you, dude. Wait, it's your call. Can we even be scores when you can throw over? We are waiting on scoring, it looks like. I'm surprised they didn't set us up with this up I know. Oh, while we wait. Oh. Every other round they'd ask. Like, as the uh, eight or old, I think. Yep. We've got time. Might as well show you more disc golf. Ezra's putting for birdie. Another good birdie on hole eight. Bump up that birdie percentage just a hair. Climbing towards the 30 percentile for the field today. I did too. Yep. 
Cannon Bird looks like we're, we're ready to get going here. That is an M2 in his hand. Mid range, very straight flying. Just a hair high for Ganon Burr, unfortunately catches one of the Guardians on the way in. Gonna be out there in that 65, 70 foot range. It's a large jar for these guys to gain a stroke. Mm, good point. This is a harp coming from Trista Tanner. Mm. Also a bit early on the release, so that was a little bit early. And Catching a tree. Not helping. Drew Gibson. Coming in a little hot. Drew Gibson. Oh, a lot hot. Wow. Looks like he's going to be about circle's edge deep. McMahon has his splice. We'll see that big spike hyzer he threw previously. Almost looks like a, like a grenade, but isn't. If there's a hard, harder shot to film in disc golf, I don't know what it is. <laughs> nice shot by Eagle. Gives him an opportunity. It Got does. a look. We've got the patented Eagle route going up and over in a big way. Huge thanks to our friends at Sunstein Law for sponsoring our patented moment of the day. You can head over to sunsteinlaw.com. They'll take care of any of your trademark patent needs. They support disc golf. We try to support them. Over to nine we go for a Kevin Jones drive. Oh. Ooh, I heard some stuff there, Philo. Yeah, it sounded like he caught one of those pom poms on the left side. And hear the reaction, not too thrilled about that. Extra work for Kevin Jones. Good thing he's got a good sidearm. He could still earn himself a birdie look with a good one. Tristan Tanner for birdie. Tristan Tanner from way downtown. Big, big putt. Wow. Well, he got those two strokes back right away, huh? I guess he did, didn't he? That didn't even look like he was in circle two. Yeah, he was out there in that 70, 80 foot range. God. Let's see what the U just gives it to him. Dang. Man. They called it 80 feet. 80 feet. Burr, forced to just lay up due to the ceiling. Does that nicely. Smart play. Mm -hmm. Let's go take another look at that Tristan Tanner putt. Rolling back that Zuka replay. Oh, he had a beautiful window to work with there. Yeah, he did. Aim right at that limb, anticipate the hookup, and drop that right in the bucket. Nicely done, Tristan. Tristan Tanner putts with shields, if you were curious. And thank you, Zuka, for rolling back that replay. Eagle McMahon for birdie, finished short left. Go right in the Eagle McMahon comfort range, just inside circle one or so. Solidly in the middle. That is Eagle's first bird of the day after the par on one. Drew Gibson now went long on the drive, coming back. Looks clean, if not a low ceiling. They yeah, were calling that Eagle putt 38 feet for the record. Oh, wow. Drew Gibson looks like he's back there too in about that same range. Yeah, I think I see a whisker just in front of his feet there. <laughs> Drew finds chains, Philo. So aggressive. Basket got in the way right on time. Drew Gibson, another solid putt. That putt. 
turning it's around, a man. It is turning into a weapon. It's really finding his way, you know, becoming his own with his putt. It's so important, man. You got to rely on that putting game out here. It is absolutely huge. There are your top ten. Quick break on the Disc Golf Network. Back in just a few. golf on a winter morning there's nothing like it it's just me the sound of snow under my feet and open fairways a perfect drive and cash in that perfect just a tanner hole three Nicely done. Beautiful touch from Tristan Tanner. Man, there's, there's not a big margin for error on this shot, Philo. There's not. you got to hug that corner nice and tight, and it's got to run out of speed right as it's getting there. Yeah. That's it's such a touchy distance because you got to throw something over stable, especially with the wind today. Yeah. Easy to saw it off a little early and go OB, that's for sure. Gibson up next. Leaves it short. Terry, is that in or out? Yeah, it looks like we're going to get a green flag. He's just oh. barely. Wow. Yeah. Good break there for Drew Gibson. Yes, it was. McMahon, we're going to see that mutant overstable mid range. a lot early Ian that is so over there where Mr. Withers was just a little while ago exactly. there, circle two Burr takes the box of three looks like Gannon going with the A2 overstable approach disc on track we're gonna take a look at Gannon's reaction off of that part job he's feeling it he is we're gonna check out Philo's philosophy brought to you by blackingdisc.com the premium disc golf store hit us Philo yeah, man, attack the course. That's number one today. You got to go. There's no holding back. You should be attacking every hole. I mean, Gannon's probably the only guy who's going to have an opportunity to make some choices here and there. Calvin's overtaken him at this point, but he's a few holes out in front of him. But, you know, play your game and enjoy the ride, young Gannon. If you're going to take this one down, keep that positive vibe, that happy energy flowing through you, and everything should work out just fine. And when in your first Disc Golf Pro Tour, Elite Series event. That's that's a life changing event. Big time. He's gonna get a lot more attention than he's used to. But <laughs> I mean, he's probably already earned a bunch of new fans this weekend, no uh, doubt about that. But I was I mean, reading you take Reddit, this thing made, down. He made a lot of a lot of fans this his weekend. His hand's gonna be tired from signing autographs. <laughs> Eagle. He's out in circle two again for Birdie. Solid effort from Eagle, just glancing off the left side of hair. One more mile an hour of speed, and that's in. Drew taking his meter in. And now, also a circle two look at Birdie.
Drew Gibson, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be a day, Philo. This is going to be fun. Yeah, it is. We're just getting started. McMahon, par comebacker. Makes good there. Tristan Tanner, that's a birdie for double T, and Burr, an absolute dropper for your leader. Well, he's tied with Calvin, who's quite ahead on the course. This is a harp coming from Ricky Wysocki over on hole six. No problem, bullseye for Ricky Wysocki. Adam Hammes can't not birdie, what production tells me. I think that's how you say it. <laughs> He's got all birdies and one bogey. He is through 12 holes. He has just oh, there's a par on a par. Production jinxed him. Ricky Wysocki 13 on seven. Rather, excuse me. Ricky, what a <laughs> that was improbable. Oh, what a fortunate bounce that was, huh? Skipped a foot before the hazard, landed a foot after the hazard. Incredible break right there. That'll be a look at it too. Yeah. You can almost count that for Rick. We are over on 10 with Calvin Heimberg. This looks like he hit a tree off the tee. This looks like he's away back in. Right? Calvin can mash on him. Just, we'll see how aggressive he gets. It's a tight green over there. Halo Destroyer. Asking wow. for it to be the one, and it was. Oh my what goodness. A shot. Vinny looks like he's just outside circle one, but what a huge bomb. Tristan Tanner on the box of four. Looks like he's got mid range here. He does. I need some air. Well, not what he wanted there. Yeah, a little low out the gate. Needed some more air on that mid-range to keep that thing pushing. Drew Gibson looks like he's going back to the eagle again. Slow flex shot right down the middle. Drew Gibson snuggled up close right on the bullseye. I think Gannon called for that one to go in. I don't think Drew needs all that excitement right now. I think he's happy with another birdie. Yeah. Back to our leader, Gannon Burr. Going mid-range again. This is that M2. Got over on that one, Ian. This is too much. There's out of, out of bounds over there. T Terry, talk to us. How close is he to that OB line? Uh, he's still got a good 8 to 10 feet. He's almost pin high, but he is in bounds. Okay. Good news there for Burr. McMahon takes the tee next. We are going to see the Rainmaker from Eagle. It's a putter. Better line than the previous round. That looks really good. <laughs> oh, man. 377 with a putter. Must be nice. Eagle McMahon things. We got a replay. Roll back the Zuka replay even of Drew McGibson. Ripping on this eagle. Putting it in the bullseye. Beautiful flight. Textbook. Little stand-up. Sliding that thing over to the right side. 
But the natural overstability of the disc, draw it back in there. Perfect eagle flight. Perfect eagle flight. This is Luke Humphreys on 10. Luke's got a good one going, man. He's eight down through nine. Yeah, so this is where you expect a normal drive to be, not where Calvin was. And the, That's going to be another birdie right there, Ian. Count it. Luke Humphreys is up seven spots into third place. He is bogey free, just one off perfect pace. This is a birdie putt for Calvin Heimberg. There is Calvin Vinny. Heimberg. There's some putting. Man, I hope this round kicks off Calvin for the rest of the year. I, I like this Calvin over the, the yesterday Calvin. Only thing that wasn't working for Calvin was the inside circle putts. Yeah. Everything else he could live with, but those insides, you gotta make that high percentage, 80, 95%, somewhere in there, like that's where it's at. That's what it takes to hang. Burr. His second on hole four, quite a bit right. Like Terry mentioned, pretty much pin high, though. Solid effort with his PA3. Is Tristan through the trust mid range? It's a dangerous angle to put at Ian. Oh. Good soft action out at least. Sound like it stayed safe from the reaction of the crowd. Ricky Wysocki tapping in that eagle. And here comes Rick. And he's just a couple off perfect pace. McMahon, casual birdie from the putter drive on a near 400 foot hole. Must be nice. Such a tool if you can do that, throw something straight on holes like this, you know, and don't have to take the side to side action. Oh my goodness, yeah. The slanted greens, huge advantage. That was Tristan Tanner making his part. This is Gannon Burr looking for the same result. And here is Gibson. Slides that one over True the rim by an inch. <laughs> He's off to a good we'll start. He is 4-4-4. Four, four, four. Luke Humphreys over on 10. Solid. Smooth and silky right there. Luke Humphreys putting on a number right now. He is putting on a show in Vegas. The show will continue when we get back from this break. Oh yeah, Nate, that looks nice. Oh! Oh, that looks nice! <laughs> it's not nice, really, though, is it? Nice! And all day today. Drew Gibson on the TF5. Destroyer. That's got a hook up, Ian. Wow. What? Is he putting for eagle? He is going to be up there at an eagle putt from circle two. Drew Gibbs is just... He got away with one there. That yeah. disc hooked up right on time. That was OB for a second. Uh -huh. That thing hooked up and skipped. That's Sarah Gilpin right there, I that believe. Is, that, that is less than 60 feet from the pin. Is it really, Terry? Oh, my goodness. What a rip. Drew. McMahon. I believe this is a cloud breaker shot. Oh, excuse me, FD2.
That'll work for Eagle. Yeah, it's just fine. Got some options there he can go to. Tristan Tanner. Tanner going to the Royal Rive. Uses that for his distance forehand and backhand shots. Beautiful shot. Yeah. Fairway central. He can go another little sidearm bump and run off the green, tap in birdie. I imagine that's what we'll see coming out of Tristan in just a moment. Burr, mid range, M2. Nice placement shot there from the youngster. I like the distance down. Someone's going to hold that Annie the entire way. It's nice. It's well played. Mm -hmm. Smart choice. He knows his discs. Beautiful shape, uh, shape of shot out the hand. Luke Humphreys on 11. Pedal player. Come on, baby. Big boy flare. Quick, quick, quick. There you in. go. Yeah. And he yeah. Goes back in bounds nicely. Right way to talk to it. It's a good disc. It listened to him. Things are happening on this leaderboard, man. Guys that were what back fourth, fifth card now <laughs> making a jump. Look at Thomas Gilbert, minus 11 through 15 holes. Finds himself into the top 10. Nico LaCastro making some moves, 11 through 14. Ezra Ader hold on 11. He is short and right, putting for birdie. He will have that comebacker for par. Field starting to make things interesting for young Gannon Burr. Mm -hmm. Let's see if uh, Calvin can continue to put the pressure on. Got a stroke lead. Make here gives him two. Calvin Heinberg is back this round. I was thinking the same thing, man. You yeah. took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay, man. I'll let it slide this time. It's fair enough. Thank you. Appreciate it. McMahon going around the outside. Around the outside, around the outside, but getting a nasty roll. This needs to curl back. Unfortunate break for Eagle McMahon. Mm. I'm sure he's missing that sidearm right about now. Yes, sir. Burr, busting out the bush now. So a little hot, but settles better than McMahon. That'll be fine. A yeah. little putt. Safe look at it. Tanner. Harp approach coming from Tristan Tanner. A little wide. Workable, though. Yeah, came up a little shy on that. Could have given the green a little bit more. Luke Humphreys. Oh. Oh, no. Off the cage for birdie. As soon as he let that go, he knew that had no chance at all. And that man right there, Drew Gibson. He's going to have an eagle look if he wants it. He does not. He wants an easy birdie. I like that Good play. choice. Yeah. No, no need in taking an unnecessary risk at this stage. Keep things tight. Keep close. With Gannon, that's where, that's where his eyes are set right now. He's going to keep an eye close on Gannon, see how his round's playing out. He's going to stay aggressive. 
try to push him into making a couple of mistakes, mental errors or physical errors either way. Got to keep that pressure on him. McMahon on your screen. Coming back towards the basket for par. Such a solid putt. I feel like he's the best in the world. He's definitely in the conversation. We see Rick make a lot of nasty putts too. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, <laughs> all kinds of awkward situations and stances. And we've seen this young man right here make a ton of them too. He's oh. trying to get himself in that conversation. Yeah, I think he's in it after this weekend. I think guys like James Conrad makes a lot of those clutch putts as well. Burr oh, slips no. out on the birdie as we talked up his putting game. Everything but in. We're not trying to jinx you, bud, I promise. <laughs> so first little miscue from your leader, Tristan Tanner, to grab a stroke. Uh-oh. The instant replay from a, a different angle. <laughs> the old disc catchers are... Spitting them out at the moment, unfortunately. Looks like a lot of solid chains and just a hair off the mark. That's Drew Gibson getting a stroke on the card and more importantly, a stroke on Gannon Burr. Uh, what do you see there, Philo? I know, looks like he just came in a little hot, bounced off the pole, shot him through the chains out the left side. Unfortunately, that can happen when you're putting uphill sometimes. Uh, Drew and Gannon are now tied, sir. Yep, I felt it coming. I mean, good thing that uh, Drew just laid that, that up, uh, mm -hmm. that eagle look up, and takes the takes the stroke, matches things up with Gannon. Ricky Waisaki on hole nine. Looks pretty perfect for Rick. Yeah, turned his back on it right out the hand. That means it's good. Scott Withers. Looking to shoot one out the gap as well. Drew Gibson on hole six. Scaring the coots, but he is on the green safely. Not the preferred side he'd like to be on the green, but he'll take it. Rely on his putting prowess once again. Mutant for Eagle. Trust in that over stability. Does so nicely, Eagle McMahon. Throw it back to about a five pace putt. Stress free for Eagle. Tristan Tanner now takes the box of six. Tristan Tanner has a harp. Hopping over to Calvin Heimberg. Or on hole 12. Looks like Calvin going Draco. Yep. That's going to Can't birdie. stop the man now. Mm -mm. He's caught fire. He's trying to touch them all. <laughs> he is. Well, minus hole four. But. Burr is going A2, overstable approach. It's very high. Really overstable, so gravity pulls that thing down to the ground in a hurry, and he's going to like that look. Somewhere in the six or seven paces from the bucket range. Over to 12, and Kevin Jones putting for birdie. You see Calvin Heimberg's disc just a couple paces in front of him. Ooh. 
Smash that one in there, Kevin Jones. He's looking real sharp, being 10 down through 12. Is he really? Certainly is. He's in a nice big tie for second place right now. The whole Actually, third, third card is just going oh. ham, apparently. <laughs> He's now in solo second place. Things are jumping all over the place out here. It's going to take a while to settle out, isn't it? That's Luke Humphreys. That's a birdie again. Took a break on 11, but back at it now, and as is Calvin. Calvin, 11 down through 12 holes. Straight up silly. Smoke show is on out there. Aderhold, he's inside Calvin for his birdie look. Third card, star frame in 12. It's good shooting right there. Yes, it is. This is the green of six. You're looking at Drew Gibson laying up a birdie putt. Ooh, this Ooh. is a sketchy putt. This means a lot for the rest of the round. Big stroke swings possible. Yeah. Drew Gibson. Most improved putter in the last season and a half, for sure. He's been putting in work. A lot of confidence out of Drew Gibson this weekend. Taking his buddy Steve Rico saying, play with confidence. Looks like it. Yeah. Justin Tanner, a little closer, also for birdie. Yeah. Double T in the bucket nicely. So smooth, so confident. Also a birdie look. A little bit of a tester putting back towards the water. Not Good. a problem. And McMahon to make this a star frame. Converts the bird as well. And they'll make their way to seven. While they do that, we are going to serve you a Ricky Wysocki shot on nine. Nice and wide of the hazard. Hopefully that curled before the out of bounds. Looks like Saw it did. Somebody goes safe. Yeah. <laughs> Should give a Rick a birdie putt. Let's fly seven, this iconic hole seven. Yeah, this is a fun one. This basket's been in a couple different locations. They decided to stick this right between those two bunkers in the back, make this big old green out of bounds, and, man, you don't have a whole lot of space to lay up. You're talking maybe 40 feet in this little peninsula area right here. If you can dump it in front of the ball golf green and slide your putter across, you got an easy three, but it's – all hazard up here, so you get to take your putt for birdie if you fly, you know, up into these hazard bunkers. A lot of guys are taking that chance. Yeah, it is. Obviously, we're double G, dropped it in for the Albatross. Yep. And that was our whole seven brought to you by VII. Drew Gibson, he has a chance to go better than perfect, Philo. That'd be awesome. He is perfect through six. And Eagle, well within his realm of possibility. Halo Destroyer in Drew's hand. Nice and wide, nice and high. Let's see what happens on the way in. Oh, so, so close. But that'll be a tap-in putt for three at worst. Mm -hmm. Can't imagine that rolled in there too deep. Yeah, it looked like it was going to curl. So close. What an effort. McMahon. Got a disc change here. He went PD2 the other day. really wide, Philo. 
don't roll out of bounds. Eagle McMahon on the struggle bus on that drive. Hung it out there too wide. Unfortunate with the ground play. Gonna be heading to the drop zone, I believe. You will, sir. Tristan Tanner. He hops in the hazard along with Drew Gibson, but they both both have birdie putts. Over to 13 in Calvin Heimberg. Vinny Aggressive line. Absolute heater right now. Oh. I was trying to climb out. He could it still really say par. Was can still save par. Burr over on the seventh. It's a D3. Ooh, Gannon Burr. Talk about just a split instance, right? Yep. Just a minute ago, if we see Drew Gibson, we're thinking, uh-oh, here we go. And now he slides in. Gannon Burr gets an opportunity to get the stroke back. He does. Advantage back to Burr. This beautiful drive on seven. Yeah. Gotta love the aggressive play out of the young guy. Yeah. A Not long couple away. seconds for Gannon waiting for that thing to settle somewhere. Mm -hmm. There's Mom Burr right there with Gannon. Huge support of him in his disc golf career. I wonder how many thousands of miles she's driven to him to tournaments. A whole bunch, I'm sure. Ricky Waisaki's on the tee of 10. Seems that it's paying off. Rick really getting over on that one. I hope that disc has a lot of overstable tendencies. That could be going way out of position off to the right side. There's the big flare skipping. in. Wow. Came back way, way late. From the drop zone, Eagle McMahon throwing his third. Such a touchy shot, Ian. Yep. It's easy for that to happen. There's just a lot of trouble to find, and unfortunately he found it, and that's going to really hurt his chances. Putting for bogey now? Yes, yep. he is. That was his third shot. Now he'll be playing five from the hazard. Big bogey putt coming up for Eagle McMahon, but an even bigger putt for young Gannon Bird to get himself back on top of Drew Gibson by a stroke. Drew's been on the charge. He still should net another birdie on this hole, go seven for seven. I'm sure he would have liked that eagle, but. Yeah. Tristan Tanner, he's lighting up a birdie putt from the hazard. Let's get Tanner to 30 under. Uh -oh. oh no. He's gonna have a longer putt than he just took. Total airmail right back into the other hazard. This is a par putt for Luke Humphreys. We're on hole 13. That's a better putt. Yeah. Back to Tristan Tanner and the other hazard we go. Also now a putt for bogey. Connected on that one. Yes, he did. Right up and down on the pole. Nicely done, Tristan. Salvage the hole. Get out of there. Unfortunately, the, that miss is going to cost him two strokes. Calvin Heinberg putting from the hazard on 13 to save par. I think Vinny's uh, righted the ship with that putter, huh? Yeah, he really has. Got a g good sleep last night or something. Something. Maybe somebody gave him a shot. <laughs> <laughs> Man, there's a brr bogey for McMahon. They're finding the hazard off the drop zone. That's Drew Gibson's disc in the hazard, but Burr is up first with his eagle putt. No problem.
one for the youngster. Snagging an eagle on the hole seven. That puts him at 34, tied with Calvin Heimberg and leading your league card by two or one, depending on the outcome of this putt from Drew Gibson. Drew remains perfect, seven for seven. Trying to keep that pressure on Gannon as well. We're gonna take another look at that Gannon Burr Eagle putt. Fist pump is out, Eagle is in. We are throwing it to our sponsors. We'll be back in Vegas in just a few. recommend the Envy to every single person that plays this golf. This is such a good throwing putter. If you don't have an Envy in your bag, I don't know what you're doing. Envy is one of the most pure, straight flying putters. Comes out clean, can handle power, it can handle touch. It's just very versatile. It holds any line that you're really putting it on. It's so good. So good! It's so good. Hello, we're Kenna. We're a Dutch growing company. We love plants, and we want to tell you some cool things about them. Just like humans, plants can communicate. They can sense when another plant is close. Plants look out for each other, too. They warn neighbors about nearby threats by secreting substances. And studies have shown that plants love a good tune. We love and understand plants. Let our passion excite you, too. Calvin Heimberg on the tee of 14. I'm sure there's a destroyer in one of his hands. A little bit out to the left side, but plenty of distance for Calvin. Yeah. Should be in a very comfortable range to get up and down. We are looking at your leader. Well, your lead card leader anyway, Gannon Burr. Going back to that trusty D1. Gonna go right, Philo. A whole bunch early. I don't think he has any danger of going out of bounds, but out of position for sure. Yeah. Looks like he might have, he might an have alley a little on that. bit of an alley there. Yeah. <laughs> take a soft run at it. Yeah. It is He's a really quick. Laying quick. up a lot of those though. Mm -hmm. And that's a quick green leading to OB. Drew Gibson. It's like a buzz shot. We'll see. Yeah. Got some good action on it. A bit too much. Made sure it went right, though. No mistake with the OB left. Great Definitely call out. making sure that he's on fair ground. Over to Ricky Wysocki on hole 10. This is his second shot. And that looks right on the target. He's surprised if does a bullseye. McMahon, he is going... Putter. That, it's that same putter, yeah. Yep, uh, that's hooked up too much as well. Mm -hmm. gonna bash a tree and drop down. Eagle's going to have some 150, 170 feet into the green. Got about halfway down there. Tanner. Yep, that's the Royal Rive for Tanner. Very solid effort from Tristan Tanner. 
all but parked right up on the bullseye whisker. Just pure hyzer, too. Beautiful. Nice. And that speed with the sidearm is such a necessity these days. You called it, sir. Kevin Jones over on 14. Pretty oh. ideal right there, Ian. That is centered up, sir. And now in the fairway, same card, same hole. Humphreys also center fairway. Yeah. All the room in the world to work with. Getting a big flex out there. That's not bad. Oh, yeah. I think you like that. And more Roadrunners. They're so cute. Me, me. <laughs> Love it. Eagle McMahon came up well short on the drive. Now it just has to salvage par. Can't do much better than that. That was a really pretty touch. Calvin Heinberg is on 14 as well. Is he going outside this tree? It kind of looks like. It looks like that's his best option. Going to have to do a little slow turner. Well done from Calvin Heimberg. Well inside circle one, uphill putt. Got Zero like. wind on that flag. Oh, how about that, huh? Gannon Burr, Calvin Heimberg, your co-leader, but Calvin well ahead on the course. You got it. Is he going to run out of holes, Philo? Have we done the math yet? I'm trying to do it. I mean, it's just going to he's going to need some help from Gannon and from Drew. Uh -huh. That's for sure. I mean, the other two fellows on the card have fallen back a little ways. Doesn't seem like they're going to put up much of a fight for taking this one down, but right now he's going to have to birdie out. Drew Gibson for birdie. Uh, he wanted to run that one in. It's got some extra it's legs on that. Still rolling. I think it might have just fallen over. Terry, what's that comeback putt look like for Drew? Uh, he's just about at circle's edge. A little bit uphill, but at circle's edge. Okay. You are looking at one of your co leaders, Burr. And he has been, like you said, aggressive, but also picking his spots. Looks like he wants to take a stab at this one. It's, a, it's safe on the backside as long as he doesn't do a Drew did and just kind of floated in there and catches an edge. There's a little room to take a stab at it. You got a distance guess on this one, Philo? 50. Well, you just can tell us what it was, because <laughs> we're going to get that one marked. They called it 70. <laughs> Did they Big really? Big putt from the young buck. It looked like it. Huge putt <laughs> in the circumstances. I mean, <laughs> it burned. Goodness gracious. That really puts the pressure back on Drew now. That was straight up silly impressive. 16 years old doing stuff like that. Using his Kevin Jones PA3. Terry, this is an inside outside circle type of thing for Drew here. Yeah, it looks like they're trying to clarify if it's exactly at 32 feet. Okay. Let me see the <laughs> that might be the shortest range finder we'll ever see here <laughs> out on the green. Love it. All right, Gibson, this is to save par. Absolute must make with Gannon drop dropping in that birdie from range. Fantastic par save. So clutch. He knew that he had to make that putt to keep his chances alive. He cannot allow Gannon to get two, three strokes, especially not on one hole. Make him earn one at a time if he's going to get it. Tristan Tanner with a really nice birdie. What a drive. Not common to see a park job like that. 
McMahon, that's a par. We're at Dannon. This, this kid has ice in his veins. Cool as a cucumber, that's for sure. He is <laughs> dialed in. He's been playing some fantastic golf all weekend long, minus the first round. He has pretty much been in the driver's seat the whole time. Yeah. Over to 11 and Ricky Wysocki. Felon. Sound like that one stood up for Ricky Wysocki. There's a red flag out of bounds. Jones for birdie on 14. Kevin Jones making a good one there. Yes, he is still in the hunt. He is a little bit up ahead of those guys, but he's 11 down through 14. I saw the hot round in the clubhouse right now. Thomas Gilbert came 13. in with a, a 13 today. The Canadian putting in work. He is. Nico's on the course with a 12, playing 18 right now. Calvin Heimberg also for birdie on four, hole 14. And Vin, back to doing Vin things. Three people now have shot 13 under out here on the end of a course. We had, uh, actually, no, just these guys, right? Because Dickerson, that was the first round on the other course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm, mix I'm mixing that up. These mm -hmm. guys are starting to put it together out here on the end of it today. They are. We are on hole nine with Gannon Burr. Burr is two ahead of his closest card mate in Drew Gibson at 33. After that, you have to go to 12th to find another card bait. And Tristan Tanner. McMahon sitting in a tie for 15th. Ooh, oh, that's a shake. Early left for Cannon. He needs to get out of there to even have a chance to progress. <laughs> Terry, I think I saw that kick out pretty nicely. Can you confirm that or not? I saw it pop out. I don't know if he's got a great lane, but it at least did get out of the tunnel. Okay. We'll see who he's left with. Royal Rive here for Tristan Tanner. That's the better line. Yes, it is. All kinds of airspace up there. Nice big flare skip off to the left. I'm sure we'll be seeing a nice sidearm approach from Tristan in just a moment. Drew Gibson should be a destroyer. Confirm once I can see the disc. Yep, Alabama. It's Matty O's favorite destroyer. I bet it is. <laughs> Even though he doesn't like destroyers, probably. <laughs> Big smash from Drew Gibson. Oh, my. Got that to stand up and ride. Make the cameraman turn around. That's always a good sign. A little chip shot for oh Drew Gibson. Oh, my goodness. Calvin Heimberg. We're on hole 15. Tough, tough get. That's a T-bird from Vinny. It does have some room to flex out over there, but it needs to hustle. Don't like his chances there. Cloud breaker here for Eagle. That was unraveled a little bit nicely. Nice placement shot there from Eagle. Push it out to the left side. Give himself a little more room to work the backhand in, unless he decides to use the sidearm for once. Ricky White. In his range. Excuse me. Ricky Wysocki on 11. Four par after the OB drive. I think that's it for Rick this weekend, Ian. I think you're right. What's he at right now? He's at six down, 31 under par through 11. Yeah, that's not going to cut it, is it? Not when it's at 35. Kevin Jones on 15. Can he get the forehand all the way there? Not quite. He's going to have a jump putt look, though. Out in circle two. Your top 10. So much moving up and down today. Look at Colton Montgomery making a late charge. He had a great start. I think he was seven for seven. Yeah, he was. Actually, gosh, he was <laughs> eight for eight even. Yes, he was. Unfortunate pickup of a bogey on nine, but since then, a couple of pars, the rest birdies. He's got three left to play. Said he's on the fairway on hole 16 after one throw right now. Oh, yeah, nice. Burr, I'm going to call this by far his worst shot of the day, Philo. Oh, yeah, that's probably the worst shot of his event. So grabbing the range real quick. 
Let's see what kind of a lane he has. Oh, he's grabbing a putter, so he's going to play this for par, which is a smart play. Mm -hmm. Don't force anything. Make these guys outplay you and win. Don't hand over strokes. Yeah. Hope you guys are enjoying the coverage on Disc Golf Network. If you're tuning into YouTube today, consider throwing us a subscribe. You get at least three times the golf. Some, some weekends you get four times the golf. Burr is second now. Good thing there aren't bo box in disc golf. Trying to get his footwork together and set himself up for a nice routine up and down. Nicely done. That's even a putt, man. It is. A scary it putt, is. but it's a putt. A little 40, 40 odd footer coming up. Calvin Heinberg's on 15, putting for birdie. Green light go for Calvin. He has no choice but to take a stab at everything all the way in. Never gave that a chance, and he knew it right out the gate. Yeah. A moment before that, we had a Kevin Jones putt for birdie. Good bid there from KJ, coming up just a hair short as well. Yeah. Tanner, his approach on nine. Coming in a little hot, but staying inside circle one. Going to be putting back towards the hazard. Eagle going to the forehand. A rare sight. Looks like the mutant over stable mid. Well, I was 50-50 on this hole. I thought Tristan would go to the, to the side <laughs> yeah. arm. And here we find Eagle oh, no. getting punished after he finally goes to it, and that's just picking up more feet as it goes. That's and hopefully go it does not trickle OB. Terry, talk to us. Oh, that's uh, gone. Yeah, that stayed on edge the whole way, guys. And as you see, it rolled out and finished in the sidewalk. That's going to be out of bounds and at least at 66 feet away. Oh, my goodness. That's two nasty rollaways for Eagle today. Not his day. Drew Gibson with this monster drive. Just has a little jump up approach left. Not even, just a little throw. Perfect angle. Well executed hole from Drew Gibson. Hole nine's been playing pretty fair today. 47% of the field's birdied. Not too many people picking up bogeys. Just 11% of the field playing pretty fair. Drew coming off his first par of the day. Getting back on the birdie train. Gannon Burr. Going to try to hold on to his two-stroke lead. Needs a make here to make that happen. Putting right at the gallery and OB here. Extra distractions. We'll see how focused he can stay. Yeah. Looks like Eagle rolled so far he's out before Gannon. And just Wisely lays up. Lays up. Gonna take his bogey. Too much danger. Hazard's just some three to five feet past. Gannon's lining up another stepper. Four paces outside circle one. This is becoming a two-man battle. It is, right? Philo, are we watching the next superstar in disc golf right now? Looks like we are, my friend. I mean, this one, is, he's trying to ice this one. He's got nine holes to play. This is literally going to turn into a match play between Drew and Gannon. Mm -hmm. Everybody else is kind of falling off the pace. These guys that are five, six, you know, seven holes out in front, Kevin Jones, Calvin Heinberg, they're going to run out of holes here in a couple of minutes, and these two guys are still pretty close. Yeah, Tristan's going to be six back if this goes in. Solid putt from Tristan. 
McMahon for bogey. And Drew Gibson will drop in the birdie eventually. Here he comes. When he can putt with a destroyer, that means he had a good approach. And Gannon Burr from the freezer. This kid is just rising to every pressure putt, every scary occasion. Well, every time that he's taken a chance, it's paid off for him, you know. Not even a chance. He's just taken some risky putts. I wouldn't necessarily call them all a chance, but he's, you know, definitely put himself in some situations where he's got a choice to make, and when he goes for it, they are going in. Here are your notable stats brought to you by Paragon as we look down on the, the iconic hole 18. Gannon Burr, birdie rate. C2 putting, 50%. Oh, that's the number at the bottom today. Yesterday was the two numbers up top, and today it's the number on the bottom. That strokes gain putting on the field. I mean, 12 strokes to the – that's a lot. That's a big number. Over a really talented field. Yeah, you're talking about some of the world's best ever. Gannon Burr. Feels like this man has arrived. Burr now on the T of 10 with his D1. Nothing wrong with that shot. Fairway Centrum. Mm -hmm. Tanner. He has grabbed his Royal Rive again. Let's see if it catches a stable edge. And there it is. Got bailed out. Look at that thing blowing past the kid. That was great. Yeah, these grounds out here really do play like ice. You got a lot, a lot of big skips. Drew Gibson with his jump man destroyer. Flips it perfectly flat. Like, his disc landed where everyone else stopped skipping. <laughs> Drew Gibson. Over to Ricky Wysocki for par on 12. Too much. It's going to net Rick a bogey here on 12. That was McMahon ripping it down the fairway of 10. Instantly starts walking that one down. That was a cloud breaker for Eagle. Down. Over to Ezra Aderhold. Looks like he's on the fairway of 16. On 16. Lined up his second shot. Can't draw it up much better than that. Beautiful. Just outside bullseye. Aderhold set up nice. What's he shooting right now, Philo? Ezra Aderhold is down in 13th place. He's eight under for the round. Getting ready to tap in another one, make it nine. Should slide him up into that tie for ninth place, I believe. Well, how about this bullseye from Kevin Jones right there? <laughs> and now we are live with Calvin Heimberg. That is a Draco for Calvin. Overstable fairway. It's working its way left. That'll do for Calvin. Yeah. His putting game is looking much more on point today. I don't think we'll be seeing him missing any more on the way to the clubhouse. Not at all. We're going to take a quick break, but don't worry. You won't miss a thing.
Welcome back. He watched, just watched Gannon Burr with another bullseye and another birdie. Putting his A2 just feet from the basket on hole 10. McMahon up next. Eagle quite a bit short left. Eagle there setting himself up with a circle's edge bid. Here is Luke Humphreys. Luke Humphreys. What a putt on 16 that was. Tristan Tanner. Second shot, hole 10. Perfect. Nestles right on bullseye. Back to Calvin Heimberg. Putting for birdie. Calvin, he's back. Love to see it. Now Calvin's at 13. There he goes. Oh, Drew Gibson. Second on hole 10. That is a jokery. He is throwing here. Overstable approach disc. Oh, that's going to work too. Just outside bullseye for Drew Gibson. Another birdie putt coming up. Yeah. Kevin Jones, after that fantastic second, just drops in the birdie on 16. Kevin Jones shooting 12 under on the round, 34 on the event, with two holes left to play on the day. So 36, kind of his cap on the score. Yep, not going to be enough to take this one down. Nope. Gannon Burr is just about to go to 37. Here are your Canna current conditions, 57 degrees. Light wind. This is perfect disc golf weather. Oh, yeah. These guys are licking their chops out here on this course. Eagle redeems himself from a subpar upshot. Great putt from the bird. Drew Gibson. Nestled just outside the circle. Needs this to stay two back of Gannon Burr. Directly in the heart. This man's automatic today. All weekend, it feels like. Drew Gibson's game is looking real nice right about now. Tristan Tanner with a nice birdie, and finally Gannon Burr come along to drop in the birdie as well. Uh, courses like this out here in Vegas, distance is such a premium. It really can set you up for some easy birdies and routine up and downs. Lead card making that hole pretty routine as they star frame it. Here are your hot rounds brought to you by 1010 Discs. Top of that list, Calvin Heimberg. He is on the tee of 17. Got the eagle, huh? I can't. I think so. That looks like the eagle to me. Yeah. Yep. You're right. He says it's low. Let's see if he gets some ground play. Get a big forward skip. Not terrible. Not great. Two more feet of air, and Calvin's parked. Yeah. Caught the front, kind of like on the back side of that mogul. If he would have caught on the top side. Yeah. Perfect skip right into the basket. Kevin Jones. Pretty low as well. Yeah, he looks so. Uh, yep. That's a ways back. Yeah, looking like pars from those two, most likely. Oh, you can't count Calvin out. He's got like a 45, 50 footer. Maybe. Yeah, in that 55 foot range for sure, yeah. just inside circle two. You are looking at Burr on the tee of 11. Yeah, that is his D3. No complaints with that. 
In the circle, right? In the circle, it's a little off to the right. You're going to have a little bit of limb to deal with, but should have a lot of chains visible. This is Tristan Tanner. He has a Pioneer over Stable Fairway. It's looking pretty perfect, Ian. Sets it on the pedestal. What a shot. Drew Gibson. Let's see if you can follow those vapor trails with the backhand version. This is a buzz coming from Drew Gibson. Absolutely lace that buzz. Oh, gosh. Ripped over on it just a little too much. Finds himself with some tricky footwork over there off to the right side. Luke Humphreys on 17. Oh, this is looking real sharp, Ian. Luke Humphreys. Potentially the surprise of the tournament, huh? Maybe you didn't pick him in your uh, pick six this weekend. <laughs> Maybe you might want to start considering uh, Luke Humphreys in your uh, in your selections. Yeah, good value pick there. That was Eagle. We're going to take a quick break from our sponsors, but you won't miss a thing. PDG Event Support Helpline. Hey, I was wondering if I could add some rules to my tournament to make it a little unique. Sure. You just need a waiver from the Director of Event Support. Okay, great. <clears throat> Four hands only. Sarah? We've been over this. Oh, sorry. This is Latitude 64. The smallest of grains handled with the greatest passion. Always trying to improve, always trying to be better. Out of curiosity, excitement, thrill. For the player and the sport. Because we want to make disc golf awesome for you. Calvin Heinberg on 17 is lining up a birdie putt. Band. And if you ask Calvin, that's his aiming point on long putts, too. <laughs> yeah, you got to have some air on the disc, especially on those long range uphill putts. Mm -hmm. Great it's effort from Calvin, unfortunately, not connecting. Back to Drew Gibson. Taking it back from the casual water. Just no ceiling here, sir. Gave it a chance, catches the underhang of the tree and bats it down. Eagle from similar space. Even more awkward of a stance and yeah. why it looks like. Looks like he might have kind of an any window. We'll see how hard he pushes it. He just line drives it. Mm. Oh. Another solid effort. Over to Luke Humphreys putting for birdie on 17. That's a great get. The man is making a lot of birdie putts today. <laughs> he sure has. That is 12 down. Zero bogeys for Luke Humphreys today. He's got an eagle as well on hole seven. A little bonus stroke out there. Yeah. He is up six spots today. And a tie for fourth. Burr for birdie.
can't I think miss. I might have iced it right there, man. You feel like it? I think so. Got I, another stroke on Drew. I think that's game over. So you got three on Drew, right? Yeah, but, I mean, the holes that are coming up, I mean, Gannon would have to make some really big mistakes to really open the door again. I mean, the last four holes are right there for yeah. the taking. There's a couple holes where I'm going to give the advantage to Drew, though. Like 17, we saw Gannon play it for par. That's well within Drew's well. We're so that's maybe one stroke right there. Maybe one. Let's see if he can find two more, maybe. It's not going to be easy. The momentum's not on his side. That's, that's a also, big thing is to, to you know, keep in mind is that right now Gannon has all the momentum. He's got the lead. You can see Drew's energy just doesn't look quite where it would be for a charge. Not that I'm not saying he doesn't have a late charge in him, mm -hmm. but you know usually when you're not doing all that stuff right there, you're like focused on the next shot. Boom, you're off to it. You put that one behind you. You move on. But right now it's all looking like. This is Cannon Burr's show right now. Yeah, he has arrived. This putt on eight was just silly. Crazy impressive. Putting right at the hazard as our OB and gallery. Doesn't matter. Well, we talked about it earlier in the tournament. Last time the young man found himself in a lead card, it was a little too bright of a light for him at that stage. And this week, not the case. There is Gannon. I don't know where he's running. Terry, do you know where Gannon's going? Uh, maybe he's just walking back down the fairway. Yeah, he likes to do that, and he's talked about that in a couple of his interviews, that he's not super, super familiar with everything, likes to go down there and take one last peek, get some information, probably playing, you know, seeing what the last group out in front's doing, mm -hmm. getting an eye on things, getting some more, some more knowledge. And, guys, I'll add into that that we're feeling a little bit of a tailwind from where they're teeing from. Very difficult to get the right speed on the disc to then get it to check up near this basket, but they're going to have a tailwind pushing at their back. Thanks for that, Terry. Uh, swinging over to Calvin Heinberg on 18. It's a nice spot there for Calvin. A little bit on the upslope. will have a little bit of an effect on his approach into the green, but cut most of the distance off the hole. Mm -hmm. Kevin Jones. a little bit to the left, Ian. Good, oh. good catch right there by that ground. That could have got real fast if it got mm -hmm. the car path. So Burr, now on the tee of 12, and Terry mentioned we're working with a tailwind here, so let's watch that. That's an H1 he's going with. Really overstable fairway. Really oh. ripping over on that overstable disc, playing for that late fade. Looks like it's come up a bit short, but that was a very, very helpful roll. Stay in bounds. What a break. Curb love. <laughs> I'll take his meter in and have another circle two look. Yeah, it's right in his wheelhouse, huh? That's in his comfort zone. He's yeah. been drilling the high percentage of those all weekend long. It's even a better angle than he made that putt from last time. Again, applying more pressure to Drew Gibson. Justin Tanner. Straight hyzer out of Tristan. No flex in that shot. What a shot it was. Well inside circle one, putting back up the grade. Yeah. We'll like that when he gets down there. Drew Gibson, that is his jump man scepter. Should work out nicely. Drew Gibson well inside circle one. Five, six paces off target. Nice little bump and run. Yes, it was. McMahon, cloud breaking 
into Wasting the clouds. No time. <laughs> <laughs> I think Eagle's a little over today. I think he is as well. But he's probably not going to be over that tap in birdie. No, he's going to like that. Up ahead to 18 we go to check out Calvin Heimberg. Oh, it's looking out to the left, Ian, way early. It's got to sit down, and unfortunately, Did that is out of oh. bounds, and that should do it for Calvin Heimberg's chances to take down this Las Vegas challenge. That's how it's going to be for Calvin. We're going to take a quick commercial break, but you won't miss a thing. Two putt from Gannon Burr, you know we're showing this full screen. <laughs> Dropping down to a knee, probably to open up the window a little bit. Gonna need some air under this disc with that tailwind. Hits the trees and still almost makes it. But we should focus on Drew Gibson now, who's going to cut that lead to two with a make. Tristan Tanner comes back for birdie. Another solid putt out of Tristan Tanner. Trying to cement his way into a top five finish, hopefully. He's getting closer. He is, and Drew Gibson to close the gap to two. Is. He's back too. He's got six holes to make up the deficit. Yes, he does. Some new life for Drew Gibson with that birdie. I think so too. Moments ago, looking a little dejected after that par on hole 11. Mm -hmm. Gannon drops in the par after Eagle dropped in the birdie. We are going to swing ahead to 18's fairway for Luke Humphrey's second shot. Going to the flex up the right side. Get on the ground. Nicely done. Oh, nice, Luke. Just He's outside the bullseye. Putt. This is Ricky Wysocki over on hole 15. Rick sitting in just six down on the round today. No, that's not the forehand he needed. Really early. Rick over to so, excuse me, over to 18 and Calvin Heimberg trying to save par. I hope he can build on this round, Philo. I'm sure he will. Yesterday was a fluke. Those, yeah. those days are so far and few between for a guy of uh, Calvin's caliber. Yeah. So, um, you know, like him to miss so many putts inside circle one, but he totally righted the ship, turned things around. It's going to be a good momentum push for him going into the early, you know, events this season. Yeah. You were looking at Tristan Tanner. He's on the tee of 13.
Looks like he's lining up the eagle Kevin Jones route. Yeah, I think that's at Royal Rive. We're going to see a big distance shot from him with those discs. That's a little early. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Big flare out. Ooh, there's OB right there. That's out of bounds. Terry, can you confirm? Yeah, it looks like that couldn't quite roll back in, and that's going to be OB. Ah, rough break there. Drew Gibson. This is another hole where it's advantage Gibson. It is, and the wind is pushing a little bit from their right to left. We were talking about that tailwind on the previous hole, and it's still blowing in the same direction. Should be coming off of Drew's right shoulder. Drew going eagle here. Wisely keeps the disc low. That oh. didn't help. That really didn't help. That he did it. Tickle that. Oh. Might have had enough speed to push all the way through. I am with you, sir. That's going to be a tough par putt for Drew coming up. McMahon. Cloud Breaker for Eagle. Also a little bit out to the left. That one spikes nicer. Did. Kid's laying up again, I bet you. He has that it's either an a2 or it is distortion they're both slow and overstable no need to force the issue on this hole he's going distortion too straight yeah that'll be just fine it will though Luke Humphreys putting for birdie on hole 18. Third straight birdie and to finish the tournament at 13 down on the round. What a day for Luke Humphreys, man. Up six spots, gets himself into a fourth, four way, or excuse me, up a tie for fourth, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Really good finishing round there today. Kevin Jones. Welcome to the booth in Milwaukee, Ian, hanging out with Philo. Philo, when's the last time you saw someone this good, this young? Makes me think of guys like Nico LaCastro and a young Will Schustrick. And, you know, I mean, Barsby didn't have quite the length as Gannon Burr mm -hmm. does, but skill set and mentality, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I can think of a few guys. I mean, Paul McBeth, <laughs> he wasn't <laughs> quite the super stud at 16, 17, mm -hmm. but, I mean, he had game when he was young, and it was impressive to see. But Gannon Burr is taking it to a whole other level, man. This is so cool to watch. Yeah, Matty O maybe is a – Matty O is another guy. I mean, there's there's been a bunch. There's been some guys over the years. You know, it feels like it's been a good couple of decades, better part yeah. of 15 years since we've really had one. I mean, Kyle Klein was the closest, but – Not quite on this level. Not quite on this level. Yeah. A couple years younger, you know, can't even drive. <laughs> Mom's got to cart him around everywhere. Here's Burr's approach on 13. Nicely done there. Yeah. Very smart. He's been playing like a savvy veteran this weekend. He's been laying up in the right places. He's been aggressive at the right times. The putting has been phenomenal. Really can't ask for much more out of any player, really. Mm -hmm. So surprising to see it out of a guy so young. Tristan Tanner's drive rolled out of bounds, now taking his meter in, throwing three. A chance to save par. It's a workable angle to run a putt. Misses pin high left. Gave that chain high chance. left. Yeah, just never got that disc on the chains. Unfortunate bogey pickup for Tristan, most likely. Eagle McMahon now. Birdie look. I promise he's there somewhere. Well. Unfortunately, Eagle unable to connect. He flies Eagle. by, and now a very, very important putt for Drew Gibson to save par. Looks like he's still inside circle one.
Solid putt there from Drew Gibson to maintain. Keeping his hopes alive. Yes, he is. Hasn't gotten out of reach just yet. He's still got five holes to play. Anything could happen. Sits just two off the lead. McMahon now comes back for par. Tristan Tanner putting for bogey. This kills his chances, I get you gotta say. Yeah, that's game over for Tristan. I mean, he's played a solid event. There's nothing to hang his head down about, but this one is over as far as taking down the win. Over on 15, we have an Anthony Barella putt. That is a separator birdie for A.B. Big putt, but coming a little bit too late. A.B.'s down 12 spots, minus three for the round. Fight, live to fight another day, huh? Yes, sir. A quick break on the network. Back in just a few. The Destroyer is essential on tour. One of the most versatile distance drivers in Innova's lineup. The new Halo Plastic is probably the prettiest plastic that, that Innova has in their, in their lineup. It makes for a, a really cool disc to bag. Very confident in throwing the Destroyer and keeping it in, in bounds at far ranges. Disc golf on a winter morning. There's nothing like it. It's just me. The sound of snow under my feet and open fairways. A perfect drive. You cash in that perfect. Welcome back. That's Eagle McMahon. You saw Drew Gibson put his destroyer in the middle of the fairway nicely. McMahon going cloud breaker here. Oh, that's boogie and hard left. That's heading towards OB. Terry, what do you think, sir? It's out of bounds, dude. Yeah, that oh. is getting marked as out of bounds. They're giving him a mark on the sidewalk right now. Oh, no. D1 from Gannon. Another well-placed shot from young Gannon Burr, Fairway Central. Mm -hmm. Tristan Tanner with the Royal Rive. Is like likes it as does Tristan. He's on the fairway nicely. Over on 16, we've got Ricky Waisaki. Rick keeping it inbound somehow.
Disc Golf is back, everybody. Brand new season. It's 2022. The Disc Golf Pro Tour and the Disc Golf Network are back in full swing. Make sure you get yourself in the house with us every week that we got live disc golf. Come check us out. We got a bunch of awesome crews to bring you all the live coverage all across the country. We're excited to have you guys back for another fun season of live disc golf right here on the DGN. Absolutely. The world even this year, Philo. We got the this European Open, man. No doubt, man. That's going to be all over the place. What a great event that is. It is a great event. I've missed playing it the last few years due to COVID. Uh -huh. Can't have been able to go over. Hopefully we get to make the trip over this time. That'd be fun. You get to see Gannon Burr all year long, most likely. Made cash at every Disc Golf Pro Tour he played at last year. 11 for 11. It's a good stat. PD, DGPT Rookie of the Year and PDJ Rookie of the Year. Well deserved. Yeah. Grabbing range here. Just a few holes ago, it felt like this was a closed door for Drew Gibson, but since then, a little bit of a flip-flop. Drew mm -hmm. gets a stroke back, and it's not quite over yet. There's still a couple of shots. Yeah. Burr. Second shot on the par for 14. He's going to be happy with that. Lovely stuff. And guys, I had all of these players marked at roughly the 500 foot placard or beyond from their drives. So very impressive drives out here. Going to make quick, quick, quick work of this par four. Absolutely. Distant showcase out here at Vegas. Tristan Tanner. I love the way he played that shot into the green. Take it wide, use the face of the hill, slow the disc down. Ricky Wysocki's putting for birdie. Hole 16, and he is in. Rick's still hanging around in the top 10. Hasn't really been his day. Seven under on the round through 16. Just a couple more left to go to get into the clubhouse. I'm sure he's a little disappointed. He's not up there in the lead card and running the tournament, but, you know, some weeks it's like that. It's hard to catch them all. Surely is, man. With this field these days, it's hard to get any of them. Should be happy to win a tournament per year <laughs> if you're one of these 1040, 1050 guys. McMahon throwing three after the OB drive. Ah, it's looking a little short. It is. Terry, you got to look at Eagle's putt over there. What's he looking at? Yeah, that's going to be a little bit obstructed, but not too bad. Just outside the circle. Okay. Workable. You are looking at Drew Gibson. Drew going with the recluse. Overstable fairway. Asking for that thing to get down in a hurry. And that was way, way early. Yeah. Way early from Drew Gibson. That's a big mistake. That's a big drop That's shot right there from Drew Gibson. That's really opening the door to... Cannon Bird to just slam the door closed on Drew. Scotty Withers. One door opens, one door closes, but Scotty Withers has been putting together a solid round. No bugs, lots of birds. Yep, seven under through the round. Dropped a couple of spots. Still has an opportunity to stay in the top ten. Mm -hmm. There is your lead card in gallery making their way down to 14's fairway. AB putting for birdie on 16. Nice putt from A.B. Not exactly the round he was hoping for or yeah, capable of. <coughs> red numbers definitely send you in the wrong direction, picking up that double bogey early on in hole five after 
excuse me, hole four after that hat trick early on. That's a cooler right there. Yeah, and then he went cold, four pars in a row, birdie bogey, a couple more pars, trying to salvage his day coming into the home stretch. Philo, we are looking at a very tough must make for Drew Gibson. And so dangerous too. There is OB on the far side of that mound. Sailed it. Yeah. It's in bounds, but barely. Still, man. Yeah. You still got a real tough par putt. Again, that could roll away and do something weird. This could turn into a five, six. Again, is looking at a three. Yeah. It's now. I think the door is closed. McMahon for birdie. He chains out, but also curls safe. Thankfully. Yeah, you got to love the effort and the show Drew put on this weekend. Absolutely. I mean, he's a true competitor. He's not going to back down and quit on himself or a tournament. You know, he's always going to put in his full effort. Even if he gets a little dejected, he's still going to come back and fire the disc down the fairway like he means it. Still taking his chances on the putting green. But this one's starting to slip away from him. Even. It is. This one is to save par. Fantastic save from Gibson. If you wanted any hope of taking this down, that needed to nestle in, and it does. He's going to be three back, most likely, with four to play. Tristan Tanner for birdie. So take Tanner to 33 under par. <laughs> Sneaks it over the rim and in. McMahon now lining up the par putt. Oh, excuse me, this is going to be for bogey, isn't it? Oh, no. Oh, that's a double. Uh, game over for an Eagle McMahon this week. Yeah. And Burr doing a quick little wind check here with the chalk bag. And this is going to give him a really nice cushion. Burr sits on a three-stroke lead with four to play. How it ends, we'll find out soon. Catch you all in just a few. We are dedicated to the game. Developing technology and providing data that helps you take the next step. Whether it's your next training session, league night, or major. Because we believe the best way to grow the sport is to push the sport. And the best way to do that is together. We're focused on the future to make that happen. Looking at Scott Withers on the tee of 17. He's got a nice drift out of that drive, hooking up nicely. Scott Withers well inside circle one near the bullseye. Beaut. Good stuff right there. So it takes Scott to eight down on the round, 32 overall. Scott sitting in a tie for ninth. Scoring is much improved here on Championship Sunday from Friday's round. Yeah, it really is, isn't it? We're on 15 with Gannon Burr. D1 here from Gannon. I 
like the shape of that. It's got great action. A little bit closer than the other day, kind of in the same neighborhood, huh? It really Just is. a little bit closer. Tristan Tanner next on the box. Royal Rye of Forehand coming from Tristan. He does have the forehand power to reach this pin. Absolutely. He's going straight up hyzer at it even. No flex on the disc. One angle, one turn. Looking for a big flare skip. We're just outside circle one. Going to have a nice safe putt at that. That's an impressive forehand. It surely is. Looks like Drew Gibson's lining up the roller again. Oh, yeah, that's that hatchet. Absolutely parked it the other day. It's looking like he's done it again, Ian. Oh, come on, Drew. What a beaut. That may have just added a little more pressure to the young buck. Yeah. You know, yeah. He's not got a tap in. He's going to have to earn that putt. He is. Let's see if Drew can take, take it back to two. McMahon. Oh, we got a lefty shot from Eagle McMahon here, Philo. Oh, let's see him park this. Oh, it's a little wide. It's not going to make it all the way back. But what a rip from Eagle McMahon. Oh He's going to give himself a pin high look. Almost 400 foot drive had an <laughs> Eagle left handed. Oh, it's just not fair, it feels like. Rolling back that Zuka replay like Drew was rolling around this pin. Putting down a butte with his hatchet. He dropped that right on a dime perfectly in the middle of the fairway. Let's that understable disc drag over to the right all on its own. Burns out of speed right on time. So well executed. Such a difficult shot. Oh, that was a cool angle. Just see what it takes to lay down the roller. Well, Drew doesn't have, to put, doesn't have to put much ante on it, does he? He threw that so slow motion. He'd let the disc do all the work there. A lot of practice to get so familiar with those angles. Absolutely. They're so touchy. Over to Ricky Waisaki on 17, long birdie bid. Looks like just inside circle two. Uh, such a solid bid from Rick. Just a hair left once again. Here are your current top ten. Gannon with three strokes clear of Drew. And Calvin is already in the clubhouse, folks. There's a chance that, that shrinks to two after this hole. There is a chance. There's no guarantees, but Gannon Burr's putter's been super hot. He hasn't really been missing too much of these right around circle's edge putts. This is Anthony Barella on 17. Maybe sneaks it over the rim. Just tall enough to creep over the rim of the bucket. That was a par for AB on 17. This is Eagle McMahon's birdie look. He tried to sling that one in there from some 60 feet. and Not happening. Tristan Tanner next. Yep, just a couple feet closer. That must be Gannon Burr off to Tristan's left. Tristan leaves it low on the birdie look. See how hard that tree is kind of centered up in his, uh, not too bad. It doesn't seem like it really matters for him. He's been taking some pretty nasty putts and making some pretty nasty putts. The double knee putt. The double knee putt. I mean, all these death putts towards OB or runaways slope, you know, slopes away from the basket. Just so impressive. Not a courage he has. <laughs> Cannon Burr to maintain the three stroke lead. Ooh, a rare air ball from Burr. Yeah, that could have potentially pushed off some 25, 27 feet as well. Terry, what's he, what's he got uh, coming got back bad. here? It's not that bad. 
Yeah, it's not too bad for him, as you guys are just saying. It looks like Eagle's going to be up next. Very makeable putt still for Gannon. Okay, so just one stroke dropping to Drew. So he'll have a two-stroke lead with three to play. McMahon saves par nicely. That's a tester for sure, man. That's not a given, you know. He's got a little texture to this. Going to have to straddle out and contend with these little twigs in his lie. Got a little breeze picking up on the flag. Big moment here. Mm -hmm. Big putt there for Burr. Wasn't a long putt, but a big putt. Huge putt. That had implications right there. That changes the whole dynamic of these last three holes or so. If he misses that putt, Drew Gibson, obviously, we know he's got the ability to park 17. We haven't seen Gannon take a stab at it, and he played it for a par mm -hmm. on Friday. So, yeah, you know, could have made things interesting. Could have. This is for birdie to close the gap to two. And Drew. I that tried to it sneak out. It did. He got the job done. We got three holes to play. Philo and I are going to take our union mandated one minute break. Catch you there. I'm Garrett Gerthy. People know me as Double G. I've been making Double G craft jerky since I was 16 years old. And while Wakona and I are driving, don't have time to stop and eat. So I always have her grab me a small bag of Double G jerky. You got smash crack pepper on Tuesday. You can Wednesday, you got mm -hmm. the garlic. Late in the round, you know, hole 14, you might need a little pick me up. Pull out some Double G jerky. Grab the big bag because you're going to have to share. You can find Double G Craft Jerky at DoubleGJerky.com. When you find yourself struggling on the green, one of the biggest things that can help you is having confidence in your putt. Distot is here to provide exactly that. This easy to use product gives you immediate feedback, letting you know, hey, that was like a super good putt. We should definitely do that again. So if you want to take that next step in your putting game, make sure you head over to distotusa.com and use one of our amazing team members discount codes to not only support what they're doing, but support Distot overall. You got a range on this? Hmm, 300? On the dot, or? I'll range it. 308. 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, and eight. Oh, I like it. Mm-hmm. I like it. Oh, like? <laughs> are you serious? That works, huh? Thank you. It was so spectacular today. Just the energy from you all is just amazing. I love you, Oregon! Welcome back to Vegas. We were looking at Gannon Burr on the tee of 16. He has a two-stroke lead, and we have three holes left to play. D1 from Gannon. Seems to be content with that effort. Safely in the middle of the fairway. Tristan Tanner is next on the box. Way early release from Tristan. He's going to need some love for that to stay safe. Try to flatten. It's trying. Terry, you got eyes on that one? Yeah, the spotter's giving the green flag. He's going to stay inbounds. All right. Fortunate there. Cloud breaker for Eagle. And Drew Gibson. That looks like his Bama Star Destroyer.
Got on top of that one again, didn't he? This one is crushed. Pushes it well out in front of the other competitors on the card. Have an opportunity to see what Gannon Burr does first. And oh, yeah. A little, a little match chess play. Match. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely it's been a match play for these last nine holes. Those are the only two guys that have been in striking distance have taken down this tournament. This is Barella on 18. EB is now putting for bogey after the comebacker. Scott Withers a par look. I, th I think that's actually his birdie look. <coughs> Take top ten, let's go. Well, that's going to drop Scott out of the top ten conversation, or have him tied for the top ten, rather. He was tied for seventh going into that hole. Mm -hmm. Unfortunate, it's going to drop back a little bit. AB, this is his comeback bogey. Back to your leader, Gannon Burr, on the fairway of 16, grabbing the range for his next shot. You see Drew Disc up there about 75, <laughs> 80 feet in front of him, gleaming in the sun. Gannon's FX2 fairway driver. it off to the left a little bit, opening the door for Drew Gibson a bit here. Say, hey, Terry, talk about what kind of putt uh, Gannon's going to have from that lie. Yeah, again, that same tree comes into play, and it might be obstructing his putt. It's about 45 feet, slightly uphill. Ooh. Door open for Drew. This is Eagle McMahon's approach on 16. Left it wide. Cutting through the trees, hoping to get back safe. Hard to tell with that camera angle. Ter Terry, do you have eyes on Eagle's disc there? I do. I do. It's directly above my head, uh, oh. hanging up in the tree. <laughs> and uh, honestly, uh, when he brings it down, he's going to be about three feet still inbounds. Okay. Tristan Tanner. Tristan joins Gannon off to the left side. Going to have a very obstructed putt being further up into the hill, that tree in the way. Big time moment right here for Drew Gibson, everybody. Huge. You know, we just love a tap in right now. Drew going eagle here. drive this right into the berm. Did he do it, Philo? Uh, looking pretty good. It's going to be a lot closer than those other two fellows, that's for sure. Well, at least Gannon, that's the guy he's worried about at the moment. Yeah. Terry, Getting tell it. us about that line <clears throat> for Drew. Yeah, he's going to be relatively short putt, not obstructed. That should be an easy make for Gibson. Oh, boy. Yeah, I like the mindset of Drew's shot here. Just drive it into the front of the hill. Hey, that's fine right there. Six paces off the basket, maybe seven tops. Nice sportsmanship there from Gannon to give him a little pound, uh -huh. congratulate him on a good shot. That's good stuff, man. Sometimes you won't see that when the battle really starts getting tight and guy's just going to get down to his disc. And Nice show of maturity there from the young Gannon Burr to, to show some respect and some good sportsmanship to Drew. 
And seeing his maturity in so many different facets this All weekend. All across the board. He's yeah, really shown, you know, the professionalism that he has as a young guy. It's very, again, impressive is the word that I keep going back to. That is Gannon Burt, left-hand side of your frame, arriving at his lie. Yeah, that's not looking like a, a green light go there. And, guys, I do want to clarify Drew's putt is a little bit obstructed. He may go to a knee, but still a very makeable putt. Thanks, Harry. Next later, deciding if it's Eagle or Gannon who is out first. The ever present question in disc golf. Eagle taking his mark from the disc in the tree, and now will attempt a birdie putt. Inches low on the birdie bid from Eagle. Next to act is your leader. Current two-stroke cushion. Most likely needs a make to keep it that way. What do you do if you're him, Philo, right now? Well, with his game plan, I wouldn't be surprised to see him try to take a soft bid at this, but if he comes up short and right and hits that face mask on the basket, that could roll easily backwards towards the green. Mm -hmm. So if he's going to make a miss, he wants to aim to miss on the left side of the target, and that'll keep him up on the plateau. That's fine. Uh, a little bit of life on the back side of that, but that'll do. Terry, what's he got left on that? Yeah, guys, unfortunately, I was directly behind him, so I'm only seeing okay. what he was seeing. Fair enough, sir. <laughs> Tristan Tanner. Let's see if he can find a way under or through this tree for his birdie. Going to be tough, though. Yeah. Sorry. Zoom tight. Good reaction to keep him right there. Tristan Tanner taking a little bit of a gamble and a risk. It is Vegas. I'm not sure if he really needed to do that at this point. I mean, he's got a couple more opportunities to get himself into that fifth place conversation. Mm -hmm. Kind of forcing the issue a little bit there, but fortunately not being punished for it. Huge, huge putt coming for Drew to close the gap to one with two to play. Gibson for birdie. Oh, how no. does that fall out? Oh, <laughs> high and left, yeah. and it just could not settle. Terry, talk to us. I was just going to say, Gannon still has 22 feet, so that oh. might breathe a little bit more life into him, seeing that Drew didn't make it, but Gannon's got 22 feet for the spot. A bit of a death putt once again. Another nerve check to maintain the two-stroke lead now. Just does grab the backside chains on the left side, stays in. Gannon Burr is going to maintain that two-stick lead to the final two holes. As a Tanner par. 
Gibson par coming up. Well, with the way things have played out from Friday, we know that Drew Gibson still has two more opportunities if Gannon Burr plays the holes the same way he did on Friday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see it again after Eagle drops in his par. Here is that Gannon Burr par putt. Closing in on his first Elite Series win. Two stroke lead, two to play. Can he hold on? We'll find out after this break. You've seen them in the hands of professionals, helping them compete at the highest level. Whale Sacks is a female-owned small business, handmade in the USA. We are dedicated to outstanding grip for all disc golfers. Look at those Canada geese hanging out in this Autobahn Society approved course. They know where they're welcome. Absolutely. Our friends from the north coming down and joining some finer weather. <laughs> Don't blame them. During the winter months, yeah. Sure do wish we were in Vegas, buddy. Yep. Maybe next year. Hopefully. Yeah. All right. From Goose to Gibson we go on the tee of 17. Star Destroyer. Gibson's going to watch this fade back. Nice flare skip, and that will do. Gannon Burr. So, Philo, talk about what we saw last time Gannon played this hole. Yeah, Gannon Burr stepped up, had no intentions of going after this green, laid it up, chucked out a sidearm, pitched it up from the right side of the fairway, took his three, did the same thing essentially on 18, two layups and a, and a pitch up. You're caddying Gannon right now. What do you tell him to do? <laughs> After you see that shot from Drew Gibson, I'm telling him, man, you better put that thing within putting range. Take your chances, man. Don't lose playing conservative. Go out swinging. I like it. He has the same disc he used Friday. It's that D1, but he is throwing backhand this time. Aggressive. There you go. The right choice at the right time. It's got a lot of angle on it, Ian. That's put, ooh, oh. that is definitely not going to Terry, to oh, that kicked back Great beautifully, kick didn't it, Terry? back into the fairway. That'll save <laughs> his par did. for sure. I, I have no idea how that found its way back into the fairway. That's outside a circle, too, so it's about 80 feet. We'll see how aggressive he wants to be with it. Was that headed for out of bounds, Terry? It was headed well right. I have no idea how it kicked itself back into the fairway, though. It was wow. way right. We'll show you to you in just a minute. Tristan Tanner, 17. That's wide as well. That's pushing hard right as well. Clipped a little. Fortunate to catch one of those trees, slow him down, fade him back towards the hole. Terry, are they looking at the gallery a little bit? Yeah. Terry, are they looking at headwind on this? We're getting some unexpected flip. Absolutely not. I'm looking at a dead calm set of flags over here on the green. I'll just call it nerves then. Eagle McMahon. 
This looks better. Got to fade out. He's going long. Yep. Two times in a row, right in the same spot. Eagle McMahon just outside circle one. Pin high. Safe putt, though. Let's see what happened to Gannon Burr. Went for it with the backhand. Yeah, I think this is just a lack of experience on the hole, not really knowing exactly what it feels like. And you see it there, catching the tippity top of one of those pines. Tree directing him back towards the fairway, catches somebody in the ankle. <laughs> All kinds of good things working out there for him. That was something else. Not really sure if it would have made any difference. I think he'd still been safe. I think you got to go a long, long ways yeah. right to find out a bounce on 18. Yeah, really I'm looking at the OB caddy book right now. On the, on the left. I don't see any OB right on the caddy book. Yeah, you can throw it as far as you want off to the right side and still scramble for your par. Maybe he knew that with that ante pull. Well, I mean, OB I think left. he knew he needed to take the chance to try to put it up there and try to match Drew because, again, I don't know if he's played the shots that are necessary for him to make birdie on 18. Mm -hmm. We saw him lay up, you know, and he pitched it way short of the – of the um, what's that fancy word you used the other day? I call it the bottleneck. Oh, the isthmus. There you go. You know, he laid up well short of that, pitched it up, pitched it up, take a par. True. Tristan so. Tanner. Nice harp approach from Tristan. Looks like Burr taking a look at the backdrop to decide how aggressive to get on this. Terry, I think you're calling this 80 foot look here. Yeah, I'd give it at least that. Mm hmm. He drops this one. His new nickname might be Ice Cold. <laughs> and then he moved on the. Did you see it move a little? On the on the practice swing, it looks like he stepped back though. Uh oh. Yeah. Not a chance for in. Right there for par. Drew Gibson is going to close the gap to one. Oh, boy. With a great finishing hole in front of us, too. And we know where Drew Gibson's going off the tee. It's the best time. <laughs> He's going for it. <laughs> He's going to keep pushing and try to put that pressure on Gannon, make him rethink or overthink, make some kind of a mental error, similar to what we just saw on the last tee shot. I mean, he got fortunate to get a – I mean, he's going to make a par either way. Right. You still kind of made him, you know, rethink his, his, his game plan. Good make from Eagle. Outside the circle, dropping in the birdie. Not the day he wanted, but still some great shots in his round. Eagle currently sitting in a tie for 22nd. Or 17th, excuse me. Just two down on the day. Now Drew Gibson to close the gap to one with one to play. Boy, Drew Gibson. Tristan Tanner. Makes good on the par. Gannon Burr. His par tap in coming here. Another look at that Drew Gibson birdie, cutting the lead to one with one to play. Oh boy, Philo. The young prodigy's got a stick with one to play. Yeah, his back's up against the ropes now. He got a savvy vet, Drew Gibson, applying the pressure these last four holes. I thought it was over a couple holes ago. Then the young, you know, young man, Burr, he makes a little mistake here and there, puts himself out of position. Drew Gibson. Had the opportunity to have this a tied up ball game On right 16, now. 16, man. Oh. Uh, he's going to be thinking about that one if he doesn't get this into overtime. But, man, it's been such a fun watch. Talk about the hardest hole on the course, this iconic finishing 18, Philo. Yeah, this is awesome. This used to be a par 5 when I first got here and turned it into a par 4. It's still pretty much exactly even a little longer. 
than it was the first time around. Getting to this uh, bottleneck here is a rip. We're talking, you know, mid 400s, and you got to land on a dime. You can't come in there hot with a big flare skip, or you have the risk of going OB deep. And then you've got a very guarded green up here. All this slope going away into the backside of the green is very fast. Definitely want to use the ground play. Throw it into this brown grass right here. Let that take all the speed off your disc. Nestle up just under the basket. Got a nice tap in birdie putt. That's the way you draw it up. That's how you draw it up. But, you know, it's just, it's really going to, we know where Drew wants to go. Right. We saw his game plan. He's going to mash that thing high and wide over the lake, try to spike it into the into the bottleneck up there, mm -hmm. have a nice, you know, mid-range, maybe even putter into the green. We haven't seen what Gannon's going to do. We saw last time, you know, first time around, rather. Right. Laid up, laid up, laid up, was content with his par. Now he's going to have to throw the shots that he needs. And we just saw in the previous hole he wasn't able to execute on a shot that he hadn't really had in the game plan. Right, right. This is going to be a big moment for Drew. He's got to land safe to keep that pressure on. If he doesn't, then it's over. Right, exactly. It's almost kind of just it's straight-up match play here. And the, the, the shots are going to unfold in a pretty interesting, in interesting order, I believe. Drew Gibson with a Halo Destroyer. That looks plenty good. Oh, my. Woo. Oh, my. Moving on the edge, Drew Gibson pushes it to the far side of the bottleneck. He's way, way up there in that 500-foot range. That's massive. Going to have a chip shot up into the green. And Gannon clutch. Bird, decision time. So let's see what disc he goes with. He threw one, like his A2 or his distortion last time, he right? He did. He chucked that thing up 275 feet, took no chances, definitely played for par. Big, big Ooh, choice for him. It's getting exciting, Philo. It is. Splice coming from Eagle. Eagle wants no part of that. He's just chipping it up. That's dangerous, man. That could. <laughs> That's what I thought. Red flag for Eagle. That wasn't looking the best. Yeah. Looked a little underthrown, undercommitted. Burr. What's he got? That's the purple driver when he's been throwing sidearm. That D1? That's it. Well, talk about pressure. Game plan change. Yep. I'd imagine probably the most pressure he's felt in his young career oh, is I right now here on hole 18 at Vegas. I'm nervous for him, man. <laughs> he's got to play for birdie to take this down in regulation. Mm -hmm. Super high probability Drew Gibson birdies from where he is. That's kind of wide. He hung it out there wide. That's going to need to hustle up. What a fortunate oh skip off the sidewalk for Gannon Burr. He just set himself up for an opportunity to take this down. That was a razor's edge. So from close. Disaster. Disaster. All out disaster. There's no recovering from where he'd have to play his third shot from. No. Back to Tristan Tanner. Also giving this the full send out to the right side. Sneaking left if it's not short enough. Okay, it's short enough. That's fine. Yep. Definitely not quite as aggressive as Drew went. Yeah. He really tried to put a lot of pressure on the young guy. And Some rolling back that Zuka replay on this D1 clutch drive from Gannon. Got a little flip at the top of that flight, which it, it did. scared that me. Made me nervous as well. This comes in off the cart path, which means it had just enough pace. It could have got a weird reaction down there, and something funky could have happened, but all things are going his way. Ah, oh, what a cool shot. Now comes the biggest approach of his young career after a couple of shots from Eagle McMahon and Tristan Tanner. Most important approach of his young career to get up into that green, give himself a birdie, walk out of here with that one-stroke victory. This place is going to erupt for him. What are you telling him to do on this approach here, Philo? Uh, with his arm speed, I'd be saying use that overstable mid-range, throw it at that second or palm tree off to the right of the target and let the gravity and overstability of the disc just guide the disc in there for you. You don't have to force anything. 
Play a smart shot. McMahon is taking the optional relief so he doesn't fall into the pond. Throw in three. I'm taking it here, okay? On flat ground. I'm taking it here. Par definitely possible from Eagle. That's a long Don't way, know if it's probable, friend. but it's possible. That's <laughs> <laughs> it is. He's giving it too much. That's going to need to hook up. Oh, that tree saved him from possibly not coming back safe. Oh, definitely. Remember last year he was throwing the tilt about that time, upside down, mm. parking it for a, what, six or seven stroke win last year? Big win for Eagle. He really put the hurting on the field. Gotta wonder what his score would have been with a working forehand. I feel like at least like two strokes around, probably something like that. Maybe more. Yeah. I mean, he he lost a couple of strokes. He went OB on a couple of shots yeah, with the, with right. the backhand, mm -hmm. trying to get an approach shot in there tight with a putter or something like that. And yeah, this is probably three to four strokes per round with how Eagle likes to play. Maybe even five. Mm -hmm. Tristan Tanner looking to close out his tournament with a birdie. Second shot on 18. Inside circle one. Oh, yeah. Your leaders making their way down 18's fairway for the final time. Again, and Burr grabbing the range on his next shot. <coughs> I'm going to guess he's somewhere in the 270 range. Oh, there we go, 294. Just inside 300 feet. Thanks to our friends at Bushnell Disc. This has got to feel like a routine hyzer approach shot. Don't make it more than what it is. Pick a spot out there where you want the disc to land. Pay attention to the grade of the hill. You can, you know, as long as you don't sky it, you can give it some speed and the ground will slow you down. It's going to either the A2 or the distortion. Looks like the A2. Yep. Something just like that. No! Terry, are you up there? Is that up? Oh no my gosh, guys. Way. Yes, that has gone about one foot out of bounds. No. He'll have a tap no. in from there, but that's just one foot out of bounds. Oh my gosh, door open for Gibson. Sports are so crazy, man. They. Yep, there's nothing <laughs> nothing crazier. There's nothing guaranteed in sports. You gotta earn everything. Drew Gibson. Birdie to push playoff. Oh, and he's done it, Philo. Spotter's excited. He's he's thinking he's at uh, James Conrad Worlds last year. <laughs> wow. Let's check out Gannon's reaction to this. I thought he'd done it all right. Hung it out there on the right side, right on that second palm tree. Comes in a little hot oh. on top of the hill. You got to get that thing down just a little earlier. Oh my goodness! Gonna have a bit of a death putt too. Oh, it is a death putt, isn't it? Yeah, he's putting into nothing. And it's gonna be really nervy. All those people. You're talking about five, six, seven, eight hundred thousand people hanging around here on the 18th green. I mean, mm -hmm. all eyes on you. Biggest putt of your young career. You got to knock this in to keep things rolling. I'm shaking for him. He's got a little bit of overhang from that pine tree as well. I mean, lots of things going on here for young Gannon Burr. Mm -hmm. Gets a little more time to think about it. Tristan Tanner for Birdie to end his tournament. Does this mean anything for Tristan? Let's see. This is for Birdie. Well, besides that. And that'll, that'll keep him in solo sixth place with a make. Very, very solid week for Tristan. That's a Another great strong tournament. sewing out here in Vegas. And here is Gannon Burr. Needs this putt to now push a playoff. Call that six, seven meters. Yeah. 
Great make. Great make. Got a way to not take too much time with it either. Yeah. Get himself comfortable, do his routine. Eagle McMahon finishing his tournament. And Drew Gibson drop in birdie, and we are headed to a playoff, sir. What a performance from Drew Gibson on these final four holes to track down the young Gannon Burr. He went ice cold, 0 for 4. Drew Gibson, 3 for 4. We're going to take another look at this Gannon Burr. OB approach. I have a small, that's actually his distortion, which is a little less stable than his, his A2. And it got just, oh, a, that's just so a rude. little too straight. So rude. That looked like it had the checkup spin on it. One more bounce and off the backside it goes. Oh my goodness. Mm. Welcome back Brutal. to the booth in Milwaukee. Philo, is there somebody said for just burying that straight into the hill right below the basket? You that's know, just throw like a flex shot at it. You know, just don't even mess with that OB. Yeah, it's such a, you know, he's been playing like a savvy veteran this whole event. Yes. And right when it counts the most, just a little tiny bit of a mental error trying to get it up on top of the plateau. You really don't need to do that. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of space to throw that disc, you know, right below the basket, right at circle's edge. That forward push will carry you right up around yeah. the bullseye area. Five-meter putt, no-brainer uphill. He, he hits every putt he looks at. Yeah. <sighs> So frustrating for the young guy to see something like that unravel. Just opens the door up for Drew Gibson, who pretty much shot himself out of it until the final four holes. And Gannonburg comes up empty. Drew Gibson gets hot. What a finish to regulation, and we get bonus golf. We are going to take a quick commercial break when we come back. Playoffs. Playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> you guys need to go to the bathroom or are you guys ready? Sing, Betty This is Matt. Matt enjoys having a beverage on the course. Don't be like Matt. Be like Tyler. Wait, what? Tyler uses a Pico Mini to keep his drink from spilling. Zing also offers a variety of minis. Hey, give this a try. Oh. Zing. Order your next Zing Mini or Pico from ZingMini.com. The Firebird has changed my life. I think that without the commitment shown to me from Innova to make this disc in 2015, I would never have made the leap to take my game to a level where I can call myself a US champion, a top 10 player in the world. In my mind, the Firebird is the greatest disc ever made. There's two components of making the Heiser flip. Throw it on a Heiser angle, this way. Finding the right disc is the most important part of it. That was a Heiser flip. You see that, mom? <laughs> <laughs> Champion, Katrina Alvarez! 
The last time we had a playoff with the Las Vegas Challenge, it was Paige Shu and Katrina Allen. This one ended in dramatic fashion. It certainly did. That was a ripping drive from Shu. <laughs> she is so small, but throws so far. Katrina's drive left a bit to be desired. Laid up for par, and then this famous putt happened from Paige Shu. Bang, baby. She's the only person I know that does like the walking jump putt. It works for her so well, though. Gotta do what you gotta do to get that momentum, huh? Yeah, sure. Here we go. Playoffs are on. Drew Gibson has the box. That is his yeah, eagle. Alive. Let's see if he throws that same tight line on the right side. Definitely advantage to the sidearm here with the landing zone and the undulation, the slope of the green going away from the hyzer skip. Got to aim small, miss small here for Drew Gibson. If that fades back, that should be parked. Ooh, a little hot, but still inside circle one. Very, very good effort from Drew Gibson. So close to being a no putt at all. Right. So close. Gannon Burr with a D1. Needs a good drive to match Gibson, who's in position for a birdie. Threw a dime here earlier today. Let's see if he can repeat the effort. Yeah, that was near perfect. Bad reaction off the ground. Should leave him right around circle's edge or so. Yeah. Terry, can you tell us about Gannon's putt? You know, I'm back here by the catch cam, so I can't get a good eye. Oh, actually, yeah, it's about the same distance. So I'll be interested to see who they decide has to go first. Oh, interesting. There, yeah. Drew's reaction, he loved it, and rightfully so. Sun setting out in the west. Beautiful evening for some disc golf. Yes, it is. Either this will be Drew Gibson's second disc golf pro tour win. He got the Portland Open last year or? Uh, 2019. 19. Yeah. 19. Mm -hmm. My bad. Or it's going to be Gannon Burr. Yeah. Drew won that one in a playoff. A he did? Three, a three-way playoff even. It was Eagle in the Oh, that was the one at Blue Lake, right? Yeah, the one at yeah, Blue yeah, Lake. Yeah. yeah, That was awesome. I can't remember the third in the playoff. Ian Anderson, Philo Brathwaite in the booth, Terry Miller killing on the course for us, and Matt Rothstein and Grant Zillner bringing you those interviews all week. Huge thanks to everybody. Oh, especially all the Las Vegas staff and the Wild Horse facility for hosting us and putting on this awesome event. They've had a long tradition having this tournament out here in Vegas. About six or seven years now, they switched over here to the Wild Horse from Sunset. Really just opened up the whole arena big galleries, top players in the world. It's been a treat. Drew Gibson is up first for the birdie looks. Yeah. Dead center from Gibson. Huge pressure putt. So much improved from past years is Drew Gibson's putt. Just so much more calm and relaxed. Making his stroke up and down the line of the center of the basket. Terry, what kind of slope is Gannon working with here? There's not really much of one, guys. Must make for Burr. Nestles in the chains, and we are on to hole three, sir. Playoff continues, young Byrne. Drew Gibson, stroke for stroke. First hole.
This is a fun playoff here, hole three. It's so touchy. It looks like the wind's pretty much non-existent now. Earlier we saw some gust coming off the left side on this hole. Definitely made that hyzer back into the green a little more tricky, make you put it up there a little higher, add a little bit more angle to the disc than you would originally do if it were calm. You really just need to play a little bump and run right on that dirt patch you see right there, just outside circle one, and everything should filter right towards the hole. That's the play. The margin for error is, like you said, it's not big. It's not big. If you push it a little too fast, you're going to go out the back long. If you come up a little shy, obviously you're going OB into the hazard, potentially even into the water. So it's yeah, it's all about touch. It's, you know, feeling what it takes to get to that dry spot. That's the most important thing to focus on. We can talk about what we saw the first time these two hit this hole. Drew had to hit a circle two putt for the birdie. Burr was parked. This is true. Let's see how it unfolds this time. Burr has his A2 tucked right there. Tour director Jeff Spring out there. Keeping an eye on everything. The Jonathan Gomez sighting. Jeff Panis as well back there. Kona's dad for those unfamiliar. That's right. Grab one more handful of chalk, make sure he gets that grip right. Hangs it out there wide. And just about as good, maybe a little bit longer than the first time. He was pretty much parked in the bullseye. Yeah. Have a little bit of work left on this one. Drew Gibson, that is the legacy recluse. It's looking pretty good. Slow down. There we go. Nice little curl back for Drew Gibson. It looks like that'll be Gannon Burr putting first. <laughs> Dueling putts once again. Once again. Oh, man. As these it should be on these two holes. These moments are so tense, Philo. Yeah, they are. I mean, oh. so exciting for both players. I'm sure Drew Gibson, he's been out here grinding for a number of years, you know, scratching and clawing, trying to get his way into this position more often, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, here comes a young Gannon Burr. Pretty impressive, and I'm sure, you know, Drew's a competitor. He doesn't want to hand over this win to the young buck. No. Nah. Signing that big contract in the offseason, man, yeah. would go a long way to validate that in his mind. Absolutely. You know? Terry, what can you tell us about these putts they're looking at? No wind whatsoever. Gannon's going to have a putt from about 29 feet. Drew's at most is 22 feet. Advantage the sun might play a factor. Oh, yeah. Yep, Gannon's going to be putting right at the sun. Maybe a little glare off the water. Obviously a sea of people out there spectating, taking in the moment. Trying to be a part of history. Once again, super clutch. Gannon Burr hasn't seen his putter hit the ground on a birdie putt that's most needed. Now Drew Gibson to push to the next.
Match finds. Puts once again. Center chains. And if you heard the man, we are headed to hole five. We're going to roll back that Gannon Burr putt just right into the sun. I don't know if you saw him looking at it. His hat was doing nothing there. Mm -mm. Way to stay composed and focused. Pushing on to hole number five. Talk about the challenges here, sir. Uh, in my opinion, this is a pretty soft par four. Under 700 feet for these guys is going to feel like, you know, a walk in the park. Drew Gibson obviously has enough speed. He almost had a look at Eagle earlier today, pushed it way, way up the fairway, even on the right side. Chose just to lay it up and take his three. Gannon Burr, we saw him throw a pretty solid shot out there. Had a little bit of extra work to do. Knocked in his putt also. But yeah, he, he's going mid-range off the tee. He did go mid-range off the tee. Very conservative play, but smart. Keeps things in the middle. Doesn't go side to side. Really opens up. There's a lot of room back there to work with. Use that green, that ball golf green. If you got a good sidearm play, really use that for the skip and let that take all the speed off on the way in. Sidearm, excuse me, backhand play has plenty of room to work with once you get towards fairway center, fairway left. Look at that gallery lining it up. Cool to see all the competitors, you know, done with their day, coming out and supporting and watching these two guys duel it out. I see a lot of fans, just normal spectators, but, you know, seeing a lot of the players as well. Saw some Thomas Gilbert hanging out there and Cupcake from Buena Park. Yeah, nice. He was out there in the gallery and a bunch of guys just hanging out, taking it in. I mean, what's better to watch than this? It's always fun to watch a playoff. Yeah. So they're, are they alternating who goes first here, Philo? It looks like it, because Drew went first on one, then Gannon went first on two. Terry, is that the new the rules for the playoffs, so they just alternate? Yeah, guys, I believe that was implemented sometime last year where they said they would alternate in a playoff. That makes a, lot, makes a lot of sense. It feels a lot more fair, honestly. You are looking at Drew. We got a this change here. Let's see if I can find out what that is. It's a finish line era that Drew's pulling on here. Going to the Heiser flip this time. That looks really good. Solid shot from Drew Gibson. Gets him out there on the left side of the fairway. Really opens up that entrance. And Gannon is sticking with his play. He's going mid-range, M2. Suspect he'll be a little bit further back from Drew with this mid-range play. But he's got that sidearm that's really, really sharp. It bent a little early. And that's he's a lot be early. Farther back than planned for. Yeah, he really turned that over out the gate. That thing had no chance of unraveling and flattening out. Going to have some choices to make. Terry, how, how far do you think Gannon has left on that approach there? Well, I'm looking at the 500-foot placard, and he is at least 200 short of that. So, I don't know. Do that quick the math. You're talking okay. at least 350, maybe even 400. Wow. <laughs> we'll see how he handles it. Yeah, he definitely he knew it right away. Oh, how nervous do you think mom is right there? <laughs> I'm sure she's excited and nervous and thrilled and proud and all the things for her young son out here doing big things on the big stage. I'm sure she would love nothing more than to see him, you know, cement this victory and take it down. But, you know, if, if he shouldn't, I'm sure she'll still be just as proud. Oh, and, yeah. You know, he's really shown a lot of professionalism out here this weekend and just way older than his number. So Gannon will be first to act on the second shots. I'm guessing somewhere between 350, 400 on this approach. We'll see if Gannon shares. I think he goes to that purple D1. It feels like that's a, the right distance for it, on a sidearm play especially. Looks like the play. He called it. That 
think that's like a slower disc. Range, man. That's the distortion. That's the disc he threw out of bounds on 18. Interesting. Well, let's watch and see what happens. Yep. This is going to be wide regardless. He pushed that way wide. He's going to need a lot of hustling, but it does so. Oh, my. Comes back beautifully. Gosh. Clutch shot after clutch shot out of Gannon Bird. We're going to take another look at this Gannon Bird sidearm. second it looked like he gave it too much respect yeah you? i really thought so but then it started to do some work that thing got overstable right on time made that finishing skip played it beautifully off the back edge of the green can't really draw it up much better than that nice little 12 15 footer coming up pressure back to drew to get close on this approach wasting no time drew gibson sets fires somebody's closer <laughs> <laughs> Drew Gibson not intimidated, shying away from the moment. Getting some love from Sarah Gilpin there. The NorCal homies. Yeah. Looks like we're headed to the next one, and I have already forgotten. I think, is it 13? Uh, I thought it went 1 3 5. Per it is seven. We're getting where it is the next hole. Hard to be there. Ooh, that's a that's a spicy playoff hole. Yeah, we had some more hole. fireworks over there earlier today, didn't we? We did. saw Dan and Burr make the eagle. Drew Gibson unfortunate to slide into the hazard. That's mm -hmm. a 50-50. It's a coin toss, you know. It's still anybody's game. Yeah, Gannon was about one revolution from falling in. Yeah, or going over the backside. He had all different types of things that could happen. So pressure now is on Gannon for the just, birdie putt. Just outside the bullseye. Hair on the left side, but good enough to get in. Not his best effort, but still effective. Drew Gibson will catch on hole seven. Well, let's check out some reactions to Burr's shot here. Oh, he picked up the mini right away. He knew that was feeling good. Great recovery shot after the errant tee. Acknowledgement. Not much out of Drew. No. Nope. It's like, yep, that's what's supposed to happen. Yeah. What he was expecting. Whew. There's a good chance this is over after the drives. You just never know, my man. It yeah. is a coin flip and a half. This green is so guarded, so protected. You have to throw an absolute pure dime to land in that sweet spot. There's no joking around on this hole. We've seen most guys take the big high wide spiking hyzer because worst case scenario, most times you're going to end up right there for a circle three. Man, you're talking about 25, maybe 25 feet at the widest point of this little opening here. Postage off the back stand, side. man, 430 feet away. Mm-hmm. And in regulation, Gannon Burr did this with his D3. For a split second, we thought that was too wide, and all of a sudden, right in the sweet spot, and perfect backspin to stay safe and out of the hazard. And Turned that into an eagle. Yes, he did. We are now live with the youngster. That's a disc change if he keeps with it. Interesting. Yeah. He's taking his time, walking it out, gathering his composure. Trying to see if there's any wind out there to contend with. There's the little chalk bag squeeze. Nothing doing as far as wind. He's definitely been a bit more deliberate than Drew Gibson has. Quite. Quite. So he is going to stick with that D1, which... He's just been throwing it a lot. Must be really comfortable with it, you know? 
because maybe there's no wind and this disc doesn't hook as hard. I oh. mean, there's, you know, a couple of different mm -hmm. variables that could be. There you go. Double, triple clutch once again for Gannon Burr. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Quadruple. Now he's going to start feeling a little rushed. Sends it. We'll see how this finishes. Feels a little right, doesn't it? It feels a little wide. He is in the hazard. It's a makeable putt, though, for Birdie. It is. It looks just around circle's edge. Maybe a hair outside. Drew Gibson. You're telling true to go for the green right i, I mean the, think, i don't think the layup that gets you anything right well i mean he then he's waiting on gannon to miss he's betting on gannon to yeah. miss and it's like i think you want to feel like you took fate into your own, your own hands. hands you know what i mean and you're gonna take the shot that you're like all right i'm playing this aggressive he's dissed down wait he just he grabbed a joker he did he just dissed down he's gonna try to land in that really small layup zone just in front of the green and try to play for and the put, guaranteed three and put the pressure on gannon this is he's gonna have to make play. that put yeah i mean pfft. Interesting choice from Drew Gibson. I hope he makes this work. Perfectly executed shot from Drew Gibson. He did the first part, and the second part's easier, I think. Kind of. I mean, from kind where he's of. at, yes, yeah. he's a good 80 feet in front of the drop zone, and we've seen people all day long from the drop zone coming up short, mm -hmm. bailing out left, and now he's got just a little basic putter, scoot shot, you know, just throw it right to the back edge of the green or maybe the fringe and let that thing push forward. Should have no problems getting up and down from where he's at. And then he's, like we just said, he's going to throw the pressure all back on the Gannon Burr's shoulders and on his putting skills. He's been making a lot of putts this weekend. He has. This is going to be the most, obviously, every shot from here on out is the most important shot. But so, so intense what Drew Isn't Gibson it? just did to Gannon. All that pressure. I love that match play. That was cool, man. That was pretty it, cool. Yeah. We'll see if it works out. Yeah. Gannon drains another putt, and he might be kicking himself. For missed opportunity, for sure. Could have closed the door, but it is a very risk-reward drive. You know, there's no guarantees with that drive. Mm -hmm. It's such a small landing zone. It's very fast. Just can't really count on it all going your way. You'll see Drew Gibson there just looking about 75, 80 feet away from the target. Just a small jump putt, pitch up over the green, and should do him. Go, something just like that just a hair long offside the, uh, the bullseye whiskers there but still within five meters mm -hmm. and now the pressure turns to Gannon in the hazard putting for birdie he just walked past the circle one whisker on his way into oh. the bunker so he's about pin high circles edge maybe a hair inside not a breath of wind pushing that flag around right now <laughs> he goes up there and tests it anyway to push things to the next hole Gannon Burr biggest putt of this man's life Off the band. Best to miss high, then the miss low. He gave it his best shot. Gannon Burr coming up a hair short. Drew Gibson got an opportunity here with this short inside circle one putt to take it down. Wow. Drew Gibson for the win. Two Las Vegas Challenge champion Drew Gibson.
Vegas Challenge champion, Drew Gibson! Drew, you had to take it into extra holes to kick off the 2022 season. Talk a little bit about your competitor for a moment. Holy cow. I've, that's some of the best disc golf I've ever seen or played against, I think, in my career so far. I mean, the kid made it from anywhere. I mean, we were on eight, I want to say, and I was like, oh, he made, you know, thinking he's going to make another 50-footer, and he did. I mean, it's, to play against that level of competition from a 16-year-old kid is unbelievable. I mean... I played my butt off the last three rounds almost, I mean, threw a perfect shot on every hole I felt like and had to go into a four or five hole playoff just to win. So, I mean, first off, that's the future of disc golf right there. I mean, that kid is going to be a uh, force you're reckoning with now, next year, and 10 years. He's insane. The poise of the kid is unbelievable. He's overall, I mean, and he's a pleasure to play with. I mean, he's an overall great kid. Um, his mom's out here. His parents support him, so that's awesome. Uh, just look forward to many more battles with him. Well, and speaking of battles, the last time you took down an Elite Series event, you also did that in a playoff in Portland. Just can't get it done in regulation or what? Well, when you shoot five under the first round, it's tough, <laughs> you know. So, but, no, I mean, just to, to battle the way I did this week and, and come back from 50th place to end up winning the event against, you know, the best players in the world feels really good. Well, and speaking of that, a few days ago you were talking with Kelvin Heimberg and you said, well, when Kelvin, you have a bad weekend, you finish fifth. When I have a bad weekend, I finish 90th. This weekend, clearly a good weekend. What have you been working on to get yourself into this position? Just, uh, I finished last year on a really, really good note. You know, I had a chance of winning USDGC. I had a chance at winning the Pro Tour Finals. So I just told myself to play every single day. Um, I was already on a pretty good trajectory, I felt like, with my game and the stuff I was working on. So I just didn't really have an off season. I played every single day, sometimes two or three times a day, just to try to keep that momentum rolling. And, you know, here we are. Speaking of that momentum, just two weeks from now, you're going to be in Waco battling a very different course that you're going to be on when you're battling out at Waco. What's your game plan there? I'm not playing Waco. Well, why not? This feels awkward. <laughs> I'm, I bought a house in Arizona, so I'm going to be moving that week and have some other obligations, I guess you could say. So All right, when are we going to see you next? Uh, after the Texas swing. So oh. Jonesboro, I'll be at Jonesboro. All right, Drew, anything you want to say to the world out there after this incredible win you took down this weekend? I just want to thank everybody who supports me, whether it's comments on Instagram. I know my dad's at home freaking out. Um, Mac, for coming to hang out with me. I just want to thank everybody who uh, has been a part of my career in any, whether I stayed at your house, whether you said something encouraging to me. You know, infinite discs, EV7 putters, squatch bags, finish line discs. Thank you to everybody who makes this happen. Without everybody, there would be no me. So thank you. There you have it, our 2022 Las Vegas champion, Drew Gibson. Thank you. Getting some love from tour director Jeff Spring there, and man, what a day. It was kind of, and Drew and I go way back to when he was like, I knew when he was like 15 year old. I filmed his first in the bag when he was 15, man. That's awesome, man. Yeah, Drew's been around for a bit. He's been grinding. He's a workhorse, super motivated, obviously super talented player. And, yeah. You know, the wins have been coming slow for Drew, but now I think he's starting to come into his own. I think he's on a new wavelength now. That putter once was liability. It's a legit <laughs> advantage now. No doubt. He's got a true weapon in his bag with that putting game. Man, signed a big contract in the offseason. He earned it right there. Yes, he did. Big time. That's a way to come out early in the season, smack everybody in the mouth with a big win, opening event of the season. That's getting work done. And how about those words from Drew about Gannon? Wasn't that just that's beautiful, man? On honestly. point. I mean, he played with poise, with confidence, true sportsmanship, you know, playing like a true gentleman, class act, and he's 16 years old. I mean, he's definitely going to be a kid to look out for in the years coming up. Yeah. Uh, we're going to throw it to a break. When we come back, we have the OTB After Show. Catch you there. It was one of those experiences that I'll never forget. It was different than just playing doubles with your partner because you had a team of, I think it was the four of you, an alternate shot. And so, you know, you're strategizing with these guys and then you're watching, you're sitting out for a whole watching them play it. And you're going to have a whole bunch of fun. You're going to learn a lot about the sport. You're going to make new friends. You're going to have just everlasting memories. I'd love to do it again if I could, to have participated in that. It was really a special experience. PDG Event Support Helpline. Hey, so I'm setting up the most epic event of all time and I'm wondering, do I need insurance? As long as the event's in the US or Canada, Insurance is included with your sanctioning agreement. Okay, awesome, because we're trying this cool new thing where we have an alligator pit on the 18th green. 
It's gonna be epic. Insurance or not, I don't think having literal death putts is a good idea. <sighs> okay, I'll consider it. Oh, down, boy, no! Are you still there? Oh god, are you still there? Your Las Vegas Challenge champion, Drew Gibson. Let's check out these highlights, Philo. Yeah, hole one, this was such a pure shot right off the bat, playing it off the base of the hill, skipping up right into circle one. This putt on hole two after going a bit deep, jamming that in there for a big par save. Oh, that was three. pretty, actually. Same thing on three. Uh -huh. We thought he was out of position once again. Comes up clutch. Same thing on hole six, the island hole. Like how many clutch putts are we watching right here? All of them. Yeah. We've seen all the clutch putts. I mean, Gannon had a handful all throughout the tournament. We saw Benny start catching on fire with his putter, but I think this is the shot right here that really, you know, catapulted Drew, got that momentum back on his side. He started making birdies, started seeing Gannon go cold. You know, the eyes got big. He smelled the, the blood in the water as the big sharks do. You yeah, catch the baby shark out there. And he, <laughs> Drew's one of the big sharks. And he smelled the blood in the water, and he came after him. He knew that you know Gannon hadn't played these last two holes for birdie the first time around, and he had to take advantage of that. Drew absolutely parking the difficult 17th drive, and then that drive on 18 to set him up for this approach shot. It's just as clutch as you can get. Got a little fortunate that Gannon came in a little hot and rolled out back, but I mean that's kind of the breaks of the game, right? I yeah. Mean, it's hard to stay perfect. Welcome back to the booth in Milwaukee. Ian Anderson, Philo Brathway, and that was an awesome weekend. Philo. Yes, it was. That was an action-packed, high-energy, high, you know, low scores. Not low scores, but some really awesome low scores. A bunch of guys coming in hot, 13 at the end. Mm -hmm. That's right around what I figured would be happening on the end uh -huh. of the course. There's definitely a lot of birdies out there. And once again, the story of the weekend really started out with Gannon Burr. We thought Chris Dickerson, he came out early, lead. We usually like that guy, but he fell yeah. off. Eagle McMahon fell off. Ricky Wysocki fell off. Gannon Bird played strong, really held his own, stayed on that lead card throughout the, re the remainder of the tournament, and really showed everybody a lot this weekend. Yeah, I, I tip the cap to the young guys. I, Super excellent. I mean, if you think about it, he won a regular Pro Tour, a three-round tournament. He won that one. He had to go with the, ma the major distance, the four-round. Yes, he did. And, and that's where Drew finally caught him. He did. Yeah, sometimes that happens, man. You just run out of gas right at the end. I've been in that position many, many times. But he's going to learn a lot from this weekend. We saw him out on the course looking slightly you know, dejected, a little bummed, a little heartbroken maybe. Mm -hmm. But I do not think this is going to hold him back one bit. I'm sure he's going to find a way to digest this, learn from this, you know, Think about the times where he laid up on a drive where maybe he should have taken his chances, you know. And, you know, these are just learning curves that you got to go through. They're the aches and pains of becoming a pro disc golfer or a professional athlete at any, you know, sport. And he's going to get better from this. He's going to come back stronger. We're going to see this kid for a long time coming. No, I don't doubt it. It's all part of the process, right? It is part of the process. Unfortunately for him, he comes up a little bit short today, but he has nothing to hold his head down about. He's got to feel proud of himself, know that he's got the goods to compete at the highest level in the game, and that's so huge to take away from this event. I hope that he feels that within his heart and believes that for himself. I hope so too. Yeah. And he should be fine. Move on to the next tournament. Go get the next one. Go watch Drew's interview, and he'll be, he'll get his spirits right back up. He's, I sure hope so. Yeah. Good really, kid. Good really, mom. Yeah, yeah. Happy to have him out there. This golf's in, uh, in safe hands for the future. We are going to check out our OTB shot of the day. Guess who and guess where? Drew Gibson with a hatchet on the 15. It's like Clue. Just silly good yeah thank goodness that there's cameras because you know just the number on the scorecard wouldn't have done that any justice that was such a beautifully well thrown shot well executed perfectly placed from start to finish oh here's the money angle catch cam sam <laughs> slow lazy backhand and heiser turning into the roller that really did just set Drew on the trajectory to come run the kid down in the last few holes. Drew got some real big separator birdies down that, la that late stretch. Yes, he did. Not a lot of people get 17. That's a tough get, long reach. 
downhill, all that OB off to the left side. So easy to sneak out OB left or just to overcook it and go way off to the right side. You get no chance for birdie from out there. Unfortunately, jury won't be at wake up, <laughs> but the rest of the tour will be. We all just found that out. Yep. <laughs> Along with Terry. So but, a couple uh, of weeks away, March 13th, yeah. 11th through 13th. That tournament's always a fun. I love, love that course. It's a great mix of open and wooded holes. It is. They have it perfectly dialed in, nine holes out in the open, nine holes in the woods. A lot of fun, lots of adversity, lots of challenges, <laughs> and there's always some crazy wind blowing off that Brazos River. <laughs> yes, there is. It is a great test of golfer. I can't wait till the, we're there. Um, I think we can wrap it up, Philo. You ready? Yeah, man. Let's get out of here. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. For everyone on the ground in Las Vegas filming two rounds a day, everybody in the booth pulling crazy hours, Philo, myself, Elaine from earlier, Terry on the course, thank you guys so much for watching and subscribing. We'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.